I'd like to open up the planning board meeting for November 18th, 2019. Members present. To my left, we got Emmanuel. We got Michael King. We got uh, town planner, Ken Buckland. And uh, Richard Swanson, associate member. First starter, any, everybody have time to go through the minutes? Or we want to put them towards the end? I reckon. I need a motion. Yep. Minutes for September 23rd. 23rd. Uh, I make a motion that we accept the minutes for September 23rd as recorded. <coughs> second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes for uh, October 7th. Same, I make a motion that uh, we accept the minutes for October 7th, 2019, as recorded. Second. Motion be made and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Lots of minutes this today. Um, Chairman, there are two sets of minutes for October 21st. One is an executive session. Oh. Which can endorse and uh, accept and hold until uh, pending litigation is made. But you can also then just to accept the, uh, the minutes of October 21st, which are not executive session. I'm going to need a motion for that, right? Motion for October 22nd for the regular minutes. So moved. Uh, I got a uh, motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. In executive session minutes, we will, we need a motion to accept them as written. And hold. And hold. Motion to uh, Accept and hold the minutes of the uh, executive session minutes of October 21st. Got a motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was painless. Next on the agenda, we have a A and R for uh, lots 1004A. 1004D. Uh, this is the Aldi supermarket. 2418, 2427, Cranberry Highway, and 4 Seth Toby Road, Polar Engineering. Mr. Madden, is this your? Uh, no, it is not. On Spola, no. Who's representing this? Uh, this A and F for. Polar uh, engineering. Polar engineering usually represents. Polar engineering usually represents the. We don't have project, any, but yeah. we don't have them here tonight. So what is it that we're reviewing? If yeah. there's no one here to present. Well, you have the uh, 21 days from the acceptance of the, uh, the submittal of the plans to the planning board. But if there's no one here to represent, or answer questions, to answer questions, then why would we deny? Well, what went? Yeah, why would we approve it? No particular reason. You you can make the decision as you what, see fit. What is the issue before us? They want to create an additional two lots <clears throat> with frontage on Toby Road and Cranberry Highway. <clears throat> what this does is it divides up the, uh, the uh, shopping center into lots. There's lot two, proposed lot three. Okay. Isn't, isn't this the same that they, they brought before us some months back where they were trying to chop it up to correct and they did it as a uh, a suggestion of what they might do okay i think we had a question about that on the uh shared parking right and they haven't we we haven't heard anything about that i think that's a little unfair on their part for us to make a clear decision on that how does that handle uh <clears throat> Although that's information that would be germane to uh, 
the zoning, uh, uh, zoning conformance of the project. It's not a consideration under A&R. And A&R, approval not required type of subdivision is based on frontage on a road that was sufficient with grading construction or a public way. In this case, Seth Toby Road and Cranberry Highway are both public ways. So the, uh, the remaining question is what the frontage is for these lots on the uh, adjoining roads. So they're creating these two lots, lots one and two. And lot three is going to stay. Well, they're, they're modifying lot two and uh, lot three. Well, by creating this new proposed lot two, do they have sufficient parking? I don't know. What was your question, Michael? By creating this proposed lot two, do they have sufficient parking? Because I don't, I don't see any parking indicated in the drawing. And we obviously don't have someone here tonight to answer the question. But in terms of the ANR endorsement, we aren't concerned. We are not concerned no. about parking, correct? You you uh, you could be concerned about parking, but it be not it would not be part of the decision as to whether or not this warrants the endorsement, because that is has to do with zoning compliance. What would be the next step if let's say we endorse the plan? What would be his next this, this owner's next step? Well, technically, he can go and sell off each lot separately to a different owner. Is it, is it, that's, am I correct in that, Ken? That's correct. Lot two already contains a building, including <clears throat> the building, right? Right. The, the building stands on its own. As the farm goes, like Ken just said, we're just looking at the, the area and the frontage. And as far as the parking goes, it has no say. Here, here we go again. This is almost, that should have been subdivided before the project was done. Then it would have been shared agreements between the the massive parking lot between everybody else. This is the lot line that's existing that's going to be removed. And this is the new lot line. They came before us and they cut remember, lot one off for, right. for uh, Wendy's. So there was a lot, right now it's lot one and lot two. Lot lot and three. Two. Two is here one. and three is here. That's what they're proposing. The no, what, what, what is it now? It's, right now, it's lot one and lot two. In lot two, and, right. and, and what's the outline of uh, where the new lot lines at? The auto zone and then here? the buildings that don't have these black ones. Ownership. This one with the dimensions on them. This one is here. Not this. <coughs> Not the dashed one. No, the dashed one is the old lot line. Yeah, lot line to be removed. Is this the new lot? Yes, that's the new lot. Line. I think it's here. You should get rid of the ones under it. He's confusing the crap out of you. Now you got a nice solid picture. I think the lot lines they're proposing are here, 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 and here, and here. And we've got three existing buildings already there. Correct. Right? Yeah, you got the mattress firm, the auto zone, and then the building that's they're being still empty. Doing. And there's a, with this here's all one building here. Yeah, this is all these. Yeah. Is that how you two read this? Yes. So, just want to confirm. To this lot. That lot line, and it's going to modify this lot line here. So that tells me that this is already a lot right here. It yes. is. It says existing lot to be removed. So this is the existing lot to mattress firm. Right. So there's lot one existing, one, two, and three. Right. Is that? That's correct. So they're taking lot two and making it bigger to encompass these other two stores. In, and suck in this land here. Well, this land here, yeah, I think it's just, uh, it's just wetlands. And, yeah. yeah, but but they are, but see the line used to exclude it, yeah. and now area. it's adding it. Right. Well, he's, he's using that yeah to gain his area. 
I get so confused. I just got to do this so I understand what we're talking about. So. It would have been a lot better if the proponent was here to explain it a little bit. Yeah. You know, we're assuming. So, so we don't get to decide whether or not we have sufficient parking in this, because you, you can't count any of this now. So you've got one, two, three. You got, from Bowler Engineering? Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. So you got four retail establishments all trying to park in basically this area right here. Uh, this doesn't show you cross easements that could allow parking to go across the lot lines. Want to step up, please? We're uh, trying to decipher your uh, plan here. Richards with Bowler Engineering. Sorry, I'm a little late. Ran into a couple accidents, but uh, well, we're glad you're here, Steve. Yeah. Uh, so thanks in advance for your time. Um, we're back in front of you um, with a, an approval not required subdivision plan here, um, seeking your endorsement. Um, I could run you through the previously approved plan that um, we were in front of you uh, back in. 2018, um, which shows the, the current situation of the three lots. This is where uh, the Wendy's is, is now situated, opening shortly. Again, uh, Toby Road, Cranberry Highway. Uh, lot two here is where uh, there's uh, the mattress firm. Um, got the auto zone here, the Ollie. Uh, so at this point, based on uh, the tenant mix and and what the owner, uh, Jay Donegan Company, is, is looking to do um, is we're proposing to adjust two of these lots. Um, lot two, um, you can see the, the pink lines. That's the lot lines that exist today that are going to be removed as part of this a &R plan. And then um, we'd be creating, this would be the new lot two and the remainder of the lot three there. Um, so happy to answer any questions, hopefully clarify any other additional are, are there cross easements for drainage parking access not into? not yet not at this time but obviously if ownership changes those will be put in place by the owner as necessary isn't that kind of putting the hot the, car, the horse before the cat cat before the horse one or the other way yeah. one or the other whatever i know the horse is already out of the barn but that's beside <laughs> the point it just seems like what I'm looking at now, the, the, you've got one, two, three, you've got four retail establishments in what will become lot two. It doesn't look like you got a whole lot of parking to accommodate them. Uh, that's what's required under zoning, so. Well, how would you know that? The, aside from the auto zone and the mattress from the other two buildings are empty. So that's true. It, it was based on the assumptions that we went in with, with which the, are, for which the approval what? on the, the proposed plans. So the assumption is what? I think there was a mix of um, retail and restaurant and the grocery store we knew about in AutoZone, but the rest was unknown. So we assumed a mix of restaurant and retail. That seems like a reasonable assumption. So I know that's still in, in motion too, but I think part of them trying to to wrap up and, and get people in the buildings is, uh, is kind of uh, waiting on this, this plan to be in place so they can move. So how many, move how, many, how many parking spots does this configuration allow for? The, the full site? Lot or? two, I'm, I'm interested in lot two. Okay, lot two. Um. <clears throat> While he's thinking of that, Michael, I want, I want to understand where you're going here. There's one, two, three, four, five stores there and, we, and approved parking for those five. But with the new lot lines, does that, does, we need um, to make sure that each of these lots have enough uh, parking for the, the yeah. buildings in those lots, yeah, uh, that, yes. that the lines are drawn correctly? Yeah. Six built, six I, I agree that the mattress firm, the mattress firm has zero, zero traffic. You could put two parking spots there, and that would accommodate the mattress firm. <laughs> Is that a comment on their business model? Or? I'm just saying. 
the auto zone, you know, on average, when I go by, even on the weekends, I might see a maximum of 10 or 12 cars in the lot. It's really not a huge traffic area. But the other, the other buildings are yet to be inhabited. Mm. So if you put a, a, a small chain restaurant in there, I Friday understand. night, yeah. and, and I just don't see, I, I don't see parking accommodations based on the lot lines. Did, were you here when, we, when it was originally approved? I wasn't. No, it was before me. Uh, Mike's point is well taken in that buildings and their parking requirements are already in, exist in existence. And I think the point you're getting to is, will there be, we don't or know. on the other hand, it would limit what they, what they, what new building can be erected there would be limited by the available parking. Correct. Yeah, so, you, yeah. You might find that you've got a building that you'd love to put a restaurant in, but you don't have parking to accommodate it. Yeah. Now you're kind of hamstringing the owner. That's fair. I think it's you know obviously we do need some easements in place here, and I think we would work through um, those par parking easements could be a piece of that. But obviously we've you know we've got a certain amount of parking here to deal with that was part of the approval um we're gonna continue to work with the town under that approval um to make things work and if there needs to be some kind of shared parking agreement between the lots then that will be put in place yeah, can that be put in place after the fact i mean it can, can are, well, I mean, are we to assume that that's going to happen it's all under one owner at this point. All lots are owned by the same so, person. So that person could, or that entity could apply easements across to allow. Each lot. So that things like drainage, because it, it, uh, it all works in conjunction with each other, uh, other, the other spots. The lot lines don't stop cars walking people <laughs> or utilities or drainage or, or stormwater water. washing across the surface. Right. So, so it, would that be something that the, if the owner owns everything on that property at the moment, would that be something where he would put some sort of a, an agreement or covenant in effect that says if you purchase lot two, you have to accommodate some sort of, of an easement for parking? And access mm -hmm. and stormwater drainage. Yes, you would. I mean, it has, how do you, how do you, how do you monitor uh, lit that? Litigate, yeah, you can't park there. That's mattress only. That's Aldi's only. That's uh, Well, that's that's what I'm looking at is the lot line cuts right across the front of those two buildings. Yeah. So you're telling me that anybody that visits those buildings is not going to park in the Aldi's parking lot, which we all know is not the case. That's I, I think we have to see this as, as uh, reasonable developers. If we were to come in and say we wanted to uh, take over a portion of this uh, shopping center that we'd want those easements in place before we purchased some portion of it now if, if it if it turned out to be that these lots got transferred into separate ownership then you've got a big problem or well, it becomes more well, I'm saying I, I don't see that happening unless there were the cross easements because I wouldn't buy this I wouldn't buy a lot on here if I didn't have access and yeah, I think it's in both parties, the future owner's best interest to get those easements in place, right? So, so from both parties right. so that they are able to. So the building behind uh, AutoZone. Um, this one yes. here? Yes, thank you. Does it have any parking under this proposed lot line? Yes, yeah, so there are some spaces in this area here and along the front. Those here. are legit parking spots on the left side there? Yes, these okay. ones, yeah. I mean, there's some rhyme or reason here to these lines, and it looks to me like these lines have been designed to accommodate uh, proportional parking based on the business. I mean, Aldi's has got a lot. The, the yet-to-be-built store has minimal. The uh, Auto Zone has some. Mattress Zone has little. But who knows what's going to be in there uh, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that there has to be a a, a, an easement or a, a, an agreement sometime but there's common parking for everybody at one time all, all these buildings were approved with the parking spaces that are there so the analysis was done and approved that says five buildings or six buildings whatever it is yeah but based but based on a different lot configuration right now you're deciding based on lot lines 
how much space each building has available to it without easements involved. That I'm not sure of, though. Like, assume it was all one lot at the beginning. I mean, there was no, uh, you can only park in these spots if you're going to this store. You can only park in these spots right. if you're going to that store. None of that existed. Right, exactly. Now we're creating that. Unless we put in place rules that say it's common but, parking. But, but we can't do that. Can't do that. In Not with an A&R. We can't I, put I will conditions. note that, uh, that the uh, amount of parking that we, we did propose was over what was required by zoning, so we did have some, some mm -hmm. built-in park, additional parking spaces over what's some required by zoning. <laughs> but based so on there is some flexibility there, and that's okay. kind of where we've located those lines. Is, but based know, on what? Based on the assumptions that we made in the approval. Based on those lines, if you put a restaurant in that left building to the left of the auto zone, you don't have anywhere near enough parking if you put a restaurant in there. You won't be able to unless they had bad food. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's a perfect example of probably that there will be some type of parking easement, I would imagine, between the, uh, the two owners here. It's in everyone's best interest to, you know, kind of make some of this probably common central parking. Um, usable by both parties and again yeah you know when we went in for the approval we did come in with with uh more parking than so who, than some of these so say we approve it tonight and um uh, papa Gino's wants to go into that building yeah. six months from now yeah who makes the call i i who I, makes the call I, that I'm they right have sufficient you. parking i'm right with you I, they, this they, is ZBA. Who does? Zoning board. They they issued the special permit. It seemed to me that at one time, based on the square footage of each of those buildings, um, on square footage only, not business type, um, a calculation was done for how many parking spots were needed. And and you're telling me that 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 was done, and there were more than than what was required. So if we, it, it would seem to me we go back to those calculations and ensure each of those buildings have enough based on but it, their square footage. But is that, that's not subject matter for an A&R though, right? Uh, it would seem not to me. I'm not an expert on them yet, but. That, that really doesn't play into this. No, you can't deal with zoning compliance and A&R. <sighs> so basically we're, He's got frontage, he's got area, and we, regardless of how we feel about the parking configuration, we really don't have a choice in that. He has the length of frontage on a public way, so he's in conformance with the, mm -hmm. the having been recently burnt a little bit. In the, mm -hmm. That's exactly <laughs> what the, I was thinking. The, but the we, roads are public, they're wide, Grade is okay, and Charlie, I imagine construction is okay. The, the, those are not considerations, just public. <laughs> if it's a public way. And a public place, yes. So. But can't we, can't we figure out right now under the new proposed lines how many parking spots would be in number two and how many would be in number not, three? But again, it's not, not our purview. It's not our. It's not our it what, it could be our concern, but we can't use it what, as what's a. What he's asked for is to divide the property up. And we, the three it, things that we're looking for is here. I understand what you're saying. It doesn't make sense, though. The consequence, Richard, is if they come with a building that requires 100 parking spaces, they won't be able to get the approval unless, as Charlie says, they go to the CBA for a variance, right? Well, they'd have to go back for a modification of the special permit in order to get relief from that, to put something else in there that was over and above what they had approved under the special permit. So the only issue, the way I see it before you, is whether or not uh, it conforms to the requirements for A and R, uh, which is looking at it. It does. We have a couple of questions, technical questions on the detail that's shown, if I might. Um, down near the line of Cranberry Highway, and it's the property where the Wendy's is under construction and where that secondary entrance is. There are three parcels there: parcel 25 E3, E2, and E1. And I'm assuming that those are easements of some sort, but my question is, who's the easement to? Or is uh, it a revised layout line? It's a highway easement taking from, uh, from when they did the, uh, 
the intersection improvements associated with the Walmart. So it was actually a taking? Is that, are those lines where it's identified with stone bounds, is that the line of delineation of the layout of Cranberry Highway today? The lines of, I kind of highlighted here, but um, this is an easement. It's kind of, a, it's got like a dotted hash to it. Um, that's, that's not what I'm asking. Okay. There was a solid line, a thin solid line that's in front of the Wendy's adjacent to Cranberry Highway and it crosses the boundary line between lot one and lot two, and several points are labeled stone bound with drill hole found. It's right here. So my question yeah, so is, where, the, where those bounds are tied together with new lines, is that a revised layout line for the state highway? No, it's an easement. It's an easement to whom? Granted to MassDOT. Granted to Mass, all right. As part of the widening of the roadway there. Do the areas shown for lots Three and two then reflect the area within the easements? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the area that's in right at the intersection of Toby Road, where well, that's a right of way easement, um, it's hard to see where the definition of that is, but is that also an easement that was granted to Mass Highway or is that to the town? Yes, that's correct. I believe it was Mass, Mass Dot. Uh, the only other question I have, and I, it's simply that there's information that's not up to date, obviously, is the two lots up in the corner of the, of the plan uh, are no longer Rogers and Buckingham. It's now Liquors and more. Um, but it says now or formally, so that may be okay. Uh, other than that, I see no reason why you can't endorse it. There's an approval not required under the statute. Yeah. I understand what Richard's concern is, but I think that's more properly taken up with the special permit rather than under this. At the ZBA? Yeah. <laughs> if it should come to them. I mean, nobody's asking for yeah, I change hear you. at yeah. this point. Because the Wendy's lot was approved. The Wendy's use was approved. It was all a part of the procedure for the special permit. So there's really no change in terms of the overall usage of all of these three parcels right now. The only thing they've done is divide it up into three and they're still showing the same owner of three parcels. So come time, if it comes time that they want to separate out all these from somebody else, it's like Mr. Buckland suggests, they're gonna to have to do easements that allow parking in order to make it compliant with a special permit. So plus you've got drainage that doesn't show here that affects all of the properties. So um, those things are details for the special permit to deal with whenever it may become necessary. Okay. We'd like to recommend endorsement of the plan. I'm second. Got a motion and a second to endorse the form A for ADC Wingham LLC. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Well, Mr. Chairman, I don't know how the endorsement works. Usually it's the single. single signature of the chairman George it must come up all the time hmm? but this is not a unique or unusual circumstance uh, it's it's not every day so I can, can I sign it as vice chair I don't know what the uh, I see if I the uh, <clears throat> I would suggest that you, the uh, majority of the board sign <coughs> this time. <coughs> we'll get George to uh, sign as well. If you could sign.
signed two paper copies as well. Changing the density, I would think would be fairly common. Mike will be right back. You know, going from a. Okay. So he signs. Yeah. The use of some of the way to make well, that, that's my point. If we go from a, uh, a walking drive. You want my signature? Yeah. When can I expect my uh, encyclopedias? <laughs> No, no, two more, two more. Two paper copies and the unofficial. Did he record it on land records? After all you've been through this valley yet. Back <laughs> again shortly with the adult. All right. See ya. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Oh, Michael. Like that. <laughs> that's that. Yeah, that's accurate. Not like that. You can't see the title block. <laughs> I, I was an office boy. That's the first thing I learned when I went to work for an office. How to fold the So you can see the title block. <laughs> Mine's elsewhere today. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, next next slide of our business here. Where are we? on the agenda. Continue public hearing for Gateway Motors, LLC. Site plan review for 379 Main Street. Mr. Madden, is that your project? Um, yes, it is. I'm Bill Madden, NGAF, on behalf of Gateway Motors, LLC. I'm uh, Joe Sorrow from Gateway Motors. I have some half sizes if you... Well, before you do, before you do that, I just want to make sure that um, we have the correct people on the... Uh, you're going to make Richard... Put Richard on this... Uh, yes, because we have two members down. Right. So, Richard, you can vote on this one. I can. 
Yeah? You want me to? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to us. That might be up to the applicant then, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill knows he's in trouble. <laughs> but I have some half sizes. Yep, that'll be good, Bill. That'll work. <clears throat> Thanks, Bill. I'll share with them. Thank you. Okay, Williams, floor is yours. What's that? Ready? Yep. Okay. Um, Bill Matt and JF, what we have is a site plan, site plan review before you tonight. You might recall that several months ago we were in front of you for the, for the same project, but a different building that's located on the site. Um, there was a, an opportunity that came from the owners of the property to uh, to lease a space with another activity to be conducted on the property. So they decided that they'd like to um, move the operation to the uh, to the existing building and that's at the base of Chapel, essentially at the base of Chapel Street with the garage door. With the garage door. It's in this portion here of the of the large of the larger building. So the previous project entailed um, the used car lot building being in the, the old fish market building. Um, right now, that's where the approval is for the display area. This is the demolition plan I'm just using right in the thing off of it. The, uh, the display area for the vehicles is still to remain really where it was previously approved. Nothing is going to change on in, in, with regard to that. The configuration for the parking that was previously approved, we intend to just leave that per previous approval in, a pl in place um, and make the modifications that were that were shown in the plan. I think the thing that will change is the actual use that's going to occur inside in that building. Um, but we felt that the, the parking that was provided, the landscaping features that were provided in the front, were. Uh, were good improvements to the site, and we'd like to just let those <coughs> remain as they are. So what we did is we chose, we, we really are developing this uh, southerly portion for the, for the most part. So where our driveway entrance was originally proposed, that is to remain, but what we've done is we've, we show a small parking lot in the existing paved area that's um, to the north of the southerly building. We show nine parking spaces in that area. It's currently paved as it is. There's no impervious surfaces, additional impervious surfaces proposed as part of this, as part of this site plan, um, whether it was the original project or the, or the one that's before you tonight. Um, so we show nine parking spaces there. Um, we also indicate a guardrail around the back of, of the, uh, the three parking spaces. Those kind of drop off in the back. There's a steep grade change there. So we detail the guardrail to, to be constructed there. There's um, a desire to use the garage bay for three, the storage of three vehicles inside the building and then retain about 810 square feet of building area for the for the office associated with the used car sales. Additionally, we show a display area for where we have six vehicles out in front of the uh, in front of the building, and we also show s some landscape features that will be placed there. Plantings are shown on the art on the <coughs> landscaping plan. They are essentially a mirror of what we proposed on the um, original on the original site plan. So it added a little continuity across the frontage of, of the property. 
We also have installed a series of um, bollards across the display area in the front. Those bollards would be removable bollards, um, so that would facilitate the movement of any vehicles in and out of that display area. You could replace, pull one of the bollards out, um, put a vehicle in place. There's no curb in that area. That's that large curb cut that is existing um, on the site that has, has been there for, um, for, for many, many years. So that's what we had, that's what we're proposing to do there. We didn't continue them all the way down to the corner because we wanted to have some accessibility from the sidewalk in the, uh, in the village to, if there were people on foot that desired to go into the car, to the car lot, we thought that leaving a little bit of an opening um, might facilitate that movement into this display area and into the office as well. So that's what we have, uh, that's what we have proposed currently on the site. Um, the next sheet over is the, is the, lands, is the landscaping plan. Um, and you can see this landscaping on the original building, we'll call it the, we'll call it the, fish, the fish market building. That's all, that was all previously approved, his desire to remain as, as previously approved. And then we'll improve the, uh, the landscape features in the front of the, uh, the new parking and, and display area in a manner consistent with what we had in front of the, uh, in front of the other building. So that's, uh, that's essentially what we're dealing with. There are no increases in impervious area on the site. The storm water that is collected on the site is collected in existing series of existing basins, it runs down to a drainage swell in the back of the property. That's intended to remain as is. There's no, there's no <coughs> proposal to change, to change any of that. The, uh, the final sheet just indicates the details. The, uh, the bollard that we selected is, is very similar to the, to the, it's essentially identical to the ones that were placed at the fire station when we did the streetscape plan there. So with the exception is these are gonna be removable and there'll be a chain between each, each one of the bollards. Um, we show a, a, a small chain link fence at the rear of the at the rear of the, um, the, the the three parking spaces in that parking lot because there is kind of a steep grade back there. So there's a need for a, a four foot uh, chain link fence at a minimum in that detail of the uh, detail of the guardrail, the sidewalks, and uh, the light pole that was really there's no light base or light poles proposed on this site with, but these are the ones that were part of the original plan. I just kept it on the plan for convenience sake more than anything. There's a, um, on your sets, and I don't have one here, I didn't plot one, it didn't, they didn't, they didn't plot very well at half, at full size, but the, uh, in the half size sets that I gave, you have an image that shows like what the building would look like with some of the parking um, in, in the front. So that was required under the site plan review requirement. So we've, at, we've added that as well. And essentially what we're trying to do is just move this operation to the, to the building um, to the south on the site, retain the approval of the building to the, to the north. We realize that that use is going to change. Um, it hasn't been presented to any, any town boards at at the current time, but we, we know that it is going to change. And the parking spaces for the other display vehicles are to remain as previously approved. So that is the overview of what we're trying to achieve. <clears throat> At this time, any questions? Uh... I have a question. The, what's, the point of the bollards is the point of the bollards is to protect the display cars or and the removable so they can get in and out. I'm it, not sure. It was it was just a feature that we thought might be nice to show on the site um, to, to provide a little definition of the parking spaces for the display and to separate the definition of the sidewalk. It was consistent with the bollards that we had further down the street and we thought it was an opportunity to match up other parts of the streetscape with a 
private development scheme in town? Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the bollards in front of the, at the police station. Fire I'm station. sorry, the fire, fire station. station. Yeah. The fire station. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are they black decorative ones? Yes. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. You consider them a decorative feature? Yes. I'm trying to imagine them as all. Is yeah, they're about three feet tall. They're a little round ball on the cast iron, round ball on the top. They don't show up that they don't show up that well on the on the image. Oh. Um, they're very similar to the light pole bases, the sign bases. There's a picture in uh, yeah. There's a detail Sorry. on the plans, right? And that is the one that's specified on the drawings, and that's the, a copy of the catalog cut from the uh, particular supplier. One of the things that we talked about when you were in here first was that the uh, visual appearance uh, from the street wouldn't be overwhelming as a used car lot because there was only two display spots. And now we've gone to six, so that, that that's what's coming to mind. I mean, I like the idea of, of the decorative decorative bollards. I'd looked up what a bollard would bollard was while you were speaking, and I saw some very industrial-looking ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so <laughs> appreciate that. Well, I think from the um, you know that is an open curb cut, and it has been that way. So we felt that it was a good opportunity to take advantage. Of that with the display area, we wouldn't be able, I mean, someone to move a display vehicle and park it there wouldn't be climbing up over a curb, wouldn't have any difficulty getting getting into that area where the where the curb cut um, currently exists. And from a from a, a standpoint of used car sales, um, the consultant that Gateway Motors has been talking with has really advocated the, the use of those of the ball street front display because that is your that is your highest and best um, selling point for for a car and we think it's we think it's not overly done there's half a dozen vehicles there um, we could have done more we could have used that 10 parking stall as complete display area but we thought a, a little bit of a blend between the parking display might be the best balance and you and you have no service uh, no service in in almost a lot of the building you're going to be using will be in interior or in interior display for up to three just more three, cars just three, right? three three cars inside three in this in this bay right here yep yeah. yeah and also just i'll submit this for the record this is a service contract from the uh, from the mechanics that are going to provide the service on on the vehicles at an off-site location This says I, the undersigned, agree to perform automotive service work for Gateway Motors of Wareham LLC at my facility as necessary. Signed, Osama Mohammed, Sam's Gas, 274 Marion Road, and Joseph Sorrow, Gateway Motors of Wareham, 377 Main Street. Sam's Gas. Sullivan, look up. Yeah, I can't picture it. Right at the corner of Cremisit Road. Cranberry Bogs are on the yep. west side. Yep. Okay, and you, you, I'm looking at your ballots, your ballots, ballots here in the front. There's an opening on the right hand side for traffic to go through. That was left for pedestrian access off the sidewalk and into the into the facility. Would you really need that? Um, how about, open? Now, how about this? Is, is the sidewalk defined going across the front of that? Right Pardon? now, it's just an open, open paved area on that curb cut. There's a sidewalk across that entire. There's a sidewalk across that entire um, area. There, another reason is, is we have a brick walk. If you look at the plan, a little see that. Yeah. There's a brick walk there. That's part of the um, the landscape feature of the of the. Um, the streetscape, and then we start those balls really at the concrete sidewalk and, can, and continue down um, to the north. 
that whole piece right there is that is that open curb cut. Okay, so n nobody's going to be able to drive through in front of these cars. That's correct. Okay. It would be nice to see one or two more bollards, Great. just to ensure that. That seems like a fairly decent opening. I could see someone trying to yeah. trying to squeeze in there. Two we could change three. we could change the spacing, yeah. and I think those are set at seven. I think we have seven. What are they? Seven Five. feet apart. Five feet. Yeah, well, I think that was changed. It should be. Uh, it says seven feet on center on, on, seven. That, on yep. that note. So even if you added one or two more, just to close that gap, so there's just no opportunity for a car to sneak in there. Well, if they're driving that little green cat, they probably could there's fit a, in. Um, well, there's a guardrail <laughs> there too, Bill. There's actually a curb at that location where that brick sidewalk is, so we have to go over the curb to get. Oh, to, to get through. So okay. We tried to take advantage of that. Yeah. Is that where the guardrail is also? Um, guardrail. This separates the two properties? I don't think you I could fit. I don't think the guardrail went down that far. There's no. a guardrail up the side of the building. There's a guardrail on the, that runs to the east. Yeah, it, um, stopped, so it stopped short of the street. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you couldn't drive. You'd know, have to drive over the curb. Between the two buildings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. From the hair salon onto Correct. that yeah. property. Yeah. When we last saw this project, it was hoped that the area that is currently a 100 foot curb cut would be, if not eliminated, it would be landscaped so that the uh, image of Main Street doesn't continue to be one of parking lot after parking lot. And here we have 160 feet of parking on Main Street, 160 feet with a 100 foot curb cut. And I don't see what it does for the improvement of Main Street as an urban, <clears throat> urban exercise. Um, the, what you're presenting today is, in my judgment, a step backwards from the plan that was presented and <coughs> uh, endorsed. There was nothing on the other plan. Yeah. There was nothing on the other plan. Well, what I submitted there was, maybe you didn't get it then. You didn't give it to them? My landscape plan? I don't recall. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I don't think, I don't think that well, it, it depends on what our gentlemen on the board, it depends what our view, is, our vision is for Main Street. What, um, can I ask a I'm question? Talking. I'm sorry. Uh, it depends on what our vision is for Main Street. And uh, if you're not bothered by having parking lot after parking lot after parking lot, um, go ahead and vote. No, that wasn't where I was headed with this. Okay. My question was, is you, in the beginning, you said that there was an opportunity that kind of pushed you in this direction, moving the car <coughs> operation from the fish market to the other building. Can I ask what the opportunity was that you're thinking is going to go into the fish market? Yes, uh, we were approached by a, a brewery that wants to open a, a, a small tap room and brew their beer there. They're just going to serve the, the beer that they actually that they actually brew. Where were they going to pack? Uh, that's what was jumping to mind is what's the parking going to be for, for Well, that it's facility? going to be, first of all, the, it's going to be majority a, a brewery. That's not going to be a, it's not going to be a restaurant. They're not going to serve food. It's most of what their operation is just going to brew their beer, but they're going to have a small tap room inside, you know, with a couple seats that people can come in and try their beer before they might buy it somewhere else. I mean, they're not going to serve any food. They're not going to, it's, they're not going to serve any other products other than their own product. I mean, there's only so much. So it's in the it's in the vill it's in the village district and in, in and there's parking on Main Street on the village, there's, village district. You know, there is other parking um, available. <clears throat> I would say down toward the. I was say, it, there's no parking on the street in that area. In, um, in this general area, there's no parking. Not on in the street. front. Not in front of. Not in front of this building. But as you, you'd have to go over to the CVS parking lot, or you'd have to go down past, well past the hair salon to find on-street parking. That's right. 
but it, nevertheless, it is in it is in the village. It is in the village district, and similar to any other rest. Well, just similar to say, for example, a restaurant in in the village area. There is no parking requirement for those restaurants. You know, it's all downtown open parking where the space is available. And you know, I think what Emmanuel was getting at is our original discussions when we approved this plan with the used car lot in the old fish market, there was talk about perhaps a, a restaurant or something of that sort in the other building where you do have a small amount of parking on site. This reverses that. Now you, you, you're proposing a, a tap room, which I mean, I've been to wine tasting rooms and things of that nature, and there's certainly more than just a couple of seats. I mean, it typically accommodates 10 to 20 people and no proposed I mean, parking or accommodate. Spots there, right? Aren't there six spots on that? Yeah, I mean, I think in our... Six, seven, eight I think spots. that we're showing nine parking spaces of the, in the lot that we're creating. We certainly don't need nine parking. We need three parking spaces per, per zoning. Um, so you're proposing shared parking here well, we're not between the car lot and, and what could be in the other building? Well, I mean, it could very similar to the A&R plan that you, you talked about um, previous to us coming up here. You know, there could be shared, there could be the opportunity for shared parking. There is six or eight spaces in front of the, uh, the fish market side of things. <clears throat> and I think if you couple that with the downtown parking, um, it seems to me that there would be adequate parking for the, both of those facilities. I mean, it's only my opinion. I, I agree with the parking on the side of the fish market. I don't, I don't agree with downtown parking. I, I don't think it's there. It is, though. I mean, but it is. I mean, it's, it's zoned. It's downtown well, parking. Well, it, it, it may be zoned for downtown parking, but if you go down downtown on a Friday night or a Saturday night, you're hard-pressed to find some place to park any closer to that building. Maybe, if you're lucky, the public parking that's across from El Mariachi. Right. That's a pretty fair walk from that parking lot to, to what you think so might be there. So it's sort of what it is in Plymouth. If you were to park at the public parking in Plymouth and walk to anywhere, the regular, any of the restaurants that are, which I actually own one of them, um, you can, you might have to walk a quarter of a mile to get to, to the restaurant that you're going to. But it is zoned for that. Actually, the closest parking is, uh, is the town parking where the train station is. So that is really the closest parking, uh, pub, town wide Fireplace. public parking. Yeah, Fireplace. exactly. <clears throat> yep. I don't know how many space. I am not familiar with how many spaces there are there, but it's it's a fair amount. It, yeah, there's a fair amount, and the distance isn't that isn't that great, but there is distance involved. As a, um, as a self-proclaimed car guy, what kind of cars do you plan on selling? Um, we're going to sell whatever. We're going to try and sell whatever sells. I mean, I'm kind of a car guy. Um, if, I could, if I could sell any car I wanted to sell, sell they probably wouldn't sell because I would want to buy them. But um, we're going to sell, you know, we're not going to sell jalopies. We're not going to sell pieces of junk. We're going to sell cars that we think are going to sell to who's ever going to be our buyer. I mean, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm involved with a, a bunch of other properties, um, and if you went in any of my places, none of them are dilapidated, none of them are falling apart. You know, they're, they're respectable buildings. And the building that's there now, and that's been there for 10 years, I mean, how much worse can it get? These cars are for, these are the, the cars that are for sale, right? Right. Um, so I want to test drive it. What happens? I'm sorry, I, I can't they see. I want where... to test drive this car. What happens? They would. We would pull the car out for them. They'd be able to pull out into the parking lot. How, and how do you do that? The ones in the front. Well, we'd have to pull out a bollard and okay. and let them. That, that that's the idea of the removable bollard. And then the pedestrians and so on are on their own. Okay. S similar to every driveway entrance on on Main Street. Well, the the whole point is trying to diminish 
if not eliminate those huge curb cuts. This is 100 feet of curb cut. Well, we eliminated well, it by putting bollards there, pretty much. Well, it's still but. a curb cut. It's still a curb cut. I mean, visually, it's a curb cut. There's no, it's okay. No, we understand that. And I mean, you know, I think I, re I, I, I reiterated the point that when we, we did the streetscape plan, when I went, when I personally consulted with the owners of that property before we completed that streetscape plan, my suggestion, I asked him if he wanted us to close that curb up. And it was decided that he did not want to close that curb. No, I remember so it was, you said that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was, I mean, we made every effort to do that. And I, I guess property owners do have a, a certain amount of, of rights. And um, you know, it was certainly within his his right not to want it closed in, but you know, and that's what we have. That's what we're working with today. I mean, that project was done maybe five years ago. What were you talking about, Michael Fitzgerald? No, he didn't want the curb cut. Yeah, he, he wanted to leave it the way it was. Right. Because it was a gas station originally, that's why there was a curb yeah, years ago. Richard, you've been awful quiet. Um, I'm anxious for uh, good businesses to move into Wareham Village and anything we can do to help get more traffic down there and invigorate that village is, is goodness. I'm not crazy about a uh, selling cars as a business for the village, but it's better than driving by empty storefronts is how I feel. That, that's, um, kind of, that's kind of my... And so like I, I, I would want to support this. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a car guy by nature. I love cars. I'm not in love with selling used cars on Main Street, but having seen that property empty for years and years and years, it would be nice to see something in there that was well presented, well manicured. Um, I like the idea of the tap room. Not that I'm a beer drinker, but you know it's kind of a an eclectic kind of establishment. Yeah, remember we look. You know, from my perspective, on on more business is good for the village. Um, our original. The plan we looked at was for one, um, one business. Now, because of opportunities there's uh, that the owner has, and now we maybe have two, yeah. and that's that's goodness. Um, I will tell you this: it looks a lot better since they've just knocked the weeds down, yeah. which they did, you know, shortly after you were here last time, and right. I, I appreciate and we, that. And we literally had to jump through hoops to just to cut the just to cut the I'm grass sure, down. I'm sure you did. <laughs> It probably cost us, you know, three times what it should have cost, but. Richard, you've spent a lot of time on the master plan. Uh, you feel this is consistent? Um, yes and no. Um, it certainly is consistent with the economic, economic development aspect. It's not necessarily consistent with the cultural or um, open space aspects of it. So um, it's always a balance. You know, and as I said before, um, for me, it comes down to the, the overall vitality and health of the village itself. And I don't see anybody else knocking on the door to move in there. Yeah. So I, I look at it, I think, Emmanuel, as if you look at the building, what are the opportunities for the building? There, there, there's not a ton just because of the way it's It used to be out. a gas station. Years right. ago, it was a gas station. Yeah, it was right. a, a fuel oil place or something. And like that. Out, out front, there was actually fuel. out front. There were actually pumps out front, though. Yeah. Right. 
Where you're putting your garage door now with them two windows with two garage doors. Garage you're doors. only going to put one in, right? We're only going to put one in, right? Just to get the cars in and out of there. And, and the cars gonna... that are going to be inside, we're going to keep, our plan is to keep it lit up. So when you're coming down Chapel Street and you look in and you see the car, the cars are going to look, you know, we're going to put our best cars out front. Those are, and inside. I mean, so the, the out, we only have six spots to put cars out front, three inside. And we have, I think, 37? 37. 37. We're obviously not going to put. We're obviously not going to put the the nice cars in the back, you know, or the nicer cars in the back, and and leave the leave the, the less desirable. The, the best cars are going to be in the front, you know. So you're, you're not going to put anything in front of the fish market like you planned originally, right? Right. No. No. Correct. So that's going to be a little patio for a sipping area, or that will be. I think that's. Yeah, I think that's an, an entirely new plan that that comes forward, um, de depending on, you know, how that how whole thing takes how you know, that whole thing takes shape. And we just thought it might be appropriate to try to retain what had been previously approved with respect to the parking yeah. on, on that as opposed to just um, taking it away. I don't know. In my view, I think that this, this plan is, is better than the, than the original plan. I think, it, I think it lays out better. I think it enhances what was done there. There's probably two times, better than two times the landscaping that was uh, that was proposed in more lands yeah and, and I mean let's face it look at look at what you, you don't understand well, I'm sure you do understand but the amount of trash and debris that was taken off the site by the by the new owners I mean that's just, well, what it's used we, as a dumping ground it was terrible it was I mean you know that building ground. that shed that got torn down in the back and um, even even just to cut that grass the weeds just to just to mow the weeds, the permitting that we had to go through to get that done was, well, it was it was permitting. Bill, on five uh, page five six, is showing that area in the the parking for the used car lot and this and that. This is proposed timber guardrail. That's what you're gonna put in the bottom of that hill going down. At the top. At the, the top. You're putting top, the guardrails, so you right? So you can't drive over it. Yeah, you can't end up. Yeah, because it's yeah. yeah. Okay, and the, and the thing is, if if you look on your plan there. There's an arrow that points down the proposed guard timbers, timber guard reel. I think that, that needs to be extended right between those five MDs and hit one of those squares. Okay. That's where the. Uh, so that, so that whoever line. did the checking on his drawing messed up, right? That would be. Yes, that would be me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 want to. Any other questions from the board? Why is it uh, you have two for you have six cars in the front? Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you want to sell cars, you want everyone to see them. If we only, if we had no cars out in the front and it just said use cars, no one would stop. I mean, you have to have something to want them to come in. Just like you have a, just like you, a butcher shop has meat hanging in the window. Can, can and you... we, I think we, you know, I think we could have put eight or easily eight or 10 cars across the front. We thought six might be a modest number to, to place there. I mean, if you go down along Route 6 in Marion, there's a, new, a newer used car lot right on Route 6 in Marion. The old Comcast. The old Comcast building. There's probably 20 cars, mm -hmm. like right up on the sidewalk of, of Route 6. Yeah, Route 6 and, and Main Street, Wayham are kind of different roads. They, you, they're totally different. Could you, could you, uh, could you approach it? from a, as far as lighting and presentation, approach it more of a, I don't know what the right term is, an artistic Well, we want them, we want the cars to look as good as they possibly can look. I mean, that would be our, that would be our. I'm just, I'm just thinking about bright lights, you know. Hello, here I am, I'm six used cars for sale, as, a pro, as opposed to some some better uh, lighting at night that might be a little bit less. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, we certainly wouldn't be against it, but then to the people that live in the houses across the street, do they like the bright lights shining? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, that's what I'm trying to stay away from that. Oh, okay. Well, I don't even think we have any. And we didn't propose any propose any, any. any lights in the front. Okay. Built the, so you just were when I said, ambient light off of the building. When I had said lit up the inside, we were going to keep the inside lit up. So you can yeah. when you come down when you come down Chapel Street, you look in the one garage door and the other big window that you're gonna see inside to the showroom, which yeah. we want the showroom to look, not, I mean. A Ferrari, a Lamborghini. Possibly, yeah. I have a 1965 Aston GTO Martin. that I'll put, that's gonna go, and I'm, look, oh, the reason I bought the building is <coughs> I needed storage for my car. That's how I ended up buying the building. I drove by and saw the for sale sign.
Hey, Bill, I got one question. On your pretty pitches here, looks like the ball is uh, pretty close to the front of the cars. And if I look at the sheet in the package, the ball is way out by the street. I think that's just a lousy graphic. Oh, no, that's, that's yeah. Small. Yeah. It's the graphics on, on that. Okay. Yeah. But I think that our goal was to essentially put those um, at the back side of the sidewalk. Um, they could, you know, there does look like there's a little room there. We could almost center them on that landscape band mm -hmm. and gain a little more, a little more square, a little more footage on that. I know that when I spoke with Ken this afternoon, he said that Dave Menard had a comment to me about, um, or a comment on the bollards and snow plowing for municipal maintenance on on the on that on the sidewalks and you wanted to choke them back probably more into the lot. Yeah and and you know my my comment is is that you know we have we have signposts, light poles, bollards right now down entire every sidewalk on Main Street and they do a pretty good job of avoiding them. Um, if we can help them up by stepping them back a, a foot or two, we're happy to do that. Okay. What do you do when we get a blizzard in the winter and your cars are all covered? Typically, you move the cars before the storm. You put them, we would likely move them into the back with that bulk storage area and uh, remove, the, remove the snow from the parking area, the display area. Have to bring the vehicles um, back up to the, uh, to the display area. So during that time, you're not making any sales. You're not advertising. You know, another way to have approached this, and I realize that cost can be a factor, but first of all, the, the existing building does not have much value in terms of visuals for the, st for the street. Uh, did, you, did you possibly explore renovating that building in such a way that the cars could be inside you create a, a, a show window that's handsome, that you, that's you know, well-designed, lit, uh, and the cars are taken off the street immediately, as it were, they're inside. Uh, that gives you more room for landscaping. And you, you, make, you offer the town a better presence. Was that at all possibly considered? Well, if money was no object, I guess that would that would be a that would and if and I mean nothing. I've lived in Wareham for 25 years, but if the town of if of Main Street Wareham, the property values and everything else look like that, and I could make and it would be worthwhile doing that because the property values of everything else are then that would make sense also. But you, I mean, you're talking about overbuilding a piece of property. Why don't you make a Make a start. <laughs> you loan. You give me the. There, you loan me the money. I'll. Well, I'll wait, do there, it. There, there are. Are there not? Have you explored sources of renewal funding to help this kind of? I, as Richard says, I'm all for business coming into Wareham. But I would hope that the businesses contribute something to the improvement, the overall improvement, so that. Everybody's values go up. Well, you have I mean, a neighbor I, I, there, I, and I won't mention the name, who I would never want to be next to. I'm sorry, who? Uh, did you, a you have a neighbor. Oh, okay. I don't want to mention the name. Oh, okay. I don't know who but you're talking that's about. That's keeping your values down, whether you know whether you like it or not. Right. So. Well, there's a lot of properties on Main Street. We as a planning that... board here have an obligation. Right. To help. Uh, yeah, I mean, money is a factor. It would cost you much more, not much, it would cost more to do Probably what I'm suggesting property to explore. Cost. But, but uh, I apologize for putting it this way, but you're not doing much for the town. You're doing it only for yourself. And uh, if, 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 the, if the people who come to the town who, who are going to do business don't make a contribution in that sense, we're not going to get any of Your property values are not going to can be. I, can I just, I, I, do you? With all due respect. So with all due respect, I don't know if you know that I actually own another business in town. I don't. Okay, I own uh, the Gateway Tavern. I've been there for 21 years. Great I, place. I personally gave $60,000 to the, 
to the Wareham High School Library. I'm kind of getting like upset because you're, I mean, you're telling me I'm not doing anything for the town. I do nonstop things for this town, okay. like literally nonstop. There's not one person that walks in the door and asks me for something that they don't get. I mean, nonstop, I get every single day, you can talk to my employees, or I get people asking me for gift certificates, donations, the fire department. I give money to this town nonstop, and now you're telling me that I don't do anything for the town. So. The point is well taken, but I'm asking you to do something else, too. Point well taken. Congratulations. $60,000 to the, to the library. Sixty. Good for you. Thank you. That's, that's, not, that's not, it's not addressing this issue. Okay, but, but you're telling together. me that I'm not doing anything for the town, so. Okay. It would. We don't want to get Point a motion well taken. Thank you. Manuel, you all set? I'm all set. Michael, you all set? I am. Mr. Swanson's all set. Yeah. Any questions from anybody in the audience? I see none. You looking for a motion to approve? Oh, no. looking for a motion yeah. to close the public hearing. <clears throat> Second. I got a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next thing we're going to do is. Uh, Standard conditions, what, what other conditions? If you want to make a motion for approval, is there anything in addition to the standard set of conditions that you'd want? I think the only thing that come beeps to mind for me is just you've proposed six cars up front that we limit it to six cars on display in accordance with the plans that have been submitted we'll, we can identify the the uh, number of cars that are existing on the on the proposed plan site plan mm -hmm. so i think i'm looking for a motion to uh endorse with whatever conditions uh we see fit at this time. We don't, do we have any conditions? Yeah, we have, we have, <laughs> we, uh, have we have a set of standard conditions. Standard conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Standard conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'd, I'd make the motion that we approve the standard conditions. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Mm -hmm. I said I. <laughs> no. That's that's three. That's three, three one. Three one. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I do something? No, no. I'm just, I think he's trying to make you feel uncomfortable. He's doing a good job of it. <laughs> Come on, be nice now. So the motion passed three to one. Is that right? Yes. All right, thank you guys very much for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, we can put them together probably for next week, next meeting, Ken? Yeah. You have to meet you someone else. Yeah, but not for long. Well, what we'll do is we'll uh, prepare a, a decision and then bring it back to the board for uh, approval. So it hasn't been approved? Is that what it has been approved. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and there's a, so a letter of conditions? Is that they, they'll sign. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. No, no, you don't have to draw it. I'm well, just in the next order of business. business. Uh, any other business decisions? Okay, performance bond for Sheridan Home Builders, Spring Ave. We have a definitive plan of David Mayor Oak Street. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What are we doing to this town? Definitive plan for uh, David Mayo on, uh, was it 3019? Definitive plan on Oak Street. That's yours, Bill Tope? Yes. Um, Bill Madden from GF on behalf of David Mather. Um, this plan is um, the one lot subdivision plan off of Oak Street that we presented, um, I don't know, a couple of months ago. And uh, Charlie has reviewed it, came up with um, a, a laundry list of items that needed us to um, address. 
We've addressed mo most of, well, we've addressed all those items and actually received a, a letter back from Charlie that uh, states, states that we have addressed them. A couple of the things that we talked about, or that were of major concern, were these slopes that we were, uh, that we were creating with our driveway coming up. Um, one of the things, um, one of the things that was suggested is that these slopes be stabilized, um, you know, early on in the process. We, we, agree, we agree with that. Um, we also show the erosion control blankets that we are going to place on those slopes. They're three to one slopes. They're not um, terribly, I don't consider that a terribly steep slope. An erosion control blanket is a, is a suitable um, practice to prevent erosion from occurring. What we also did is with our drainage trench that we have along the side at the toe of the slope, we also indicated that we'd like to have a silt, that we're going to put a silt fence there during construction to prevent any sediment from potentially contaminating some of that stone um, as, as part of our drainage. So once the, the slope is fully stabilized, we'll take that out and, uh, and uh, in the slope will be vegetated and stable from that point forward. At the end of our at the end of our, uh, our trench, we had initially just put a grate on top of some um, infiltration an infiltration chamber. Um, we suggested that we put a catch basin with a deep sump with a hood on that before we tie into the uh, to our infiltration trenches that are down the center of the road. So we also included that. There were a couple of other things, a little turnaround that the fire department wanted up on the top of the slope. Um, we had an issue with a drainage calculation in a, in a value that was used for the exfiltration of the soil. Um, we changed that, ran the calculations, and we ended up with eight chambers underneath, underneath the roadway. It was one of the major concerns to try to make sure that we, we have all of our water retained on the site and really have no adverse impact to the neighbors across the street. So um, we believe that we've achieved that goal. Also have a, a sewer line that's going to come down from the buildable portion of the site. We have a small manhole and then Guy Campina suggested that we tie both of those services together and only have one um, service connection into the street. So the service connection from the existing house will have a structure built on that, on that line and we'll tie our new sewer service into that and then they'll both end up into the street, so there won't be a, uh, a street cut necessary for, uh, for, for the sewer line. I know there's a couple of other things that, that I'm probably overlooking, Charlie, but for the most part, all the concerns that you had um, have been addressed. I would agree with that. Uh, oh, the apron, that's what... The, yeah, you do show an apron on the plan. We do. We have it does say paved, but I don't remember... It's right there, but I don't remember if it showed the thickness. So it's a normal paved apron, which would mean inch and three quarters plus an inch and a half of mix, inch and a quarter of mix, whatever it is. Yeah, three inches is what we usually... So, for. and I recommended that at least go back to the street line so that uh, it's paved all within the layout of Oak Street. And if, if it grows over the top of the roll brim that's there that shows on the profile, that's fine. So the information is there. Uh, my only concern, and I put it into my initial letter as well as this one, my major concern is for the stabilization of the slopes, as Mr. Madden has suggested, and that all attempts to be made to not only stabilize it, but to get the loam and seed on there and get the plast grass planted so that it's in good, stable shape before you begin any of the construction on the actual road or the trenches for the drainage. Because any of the runoff that comes off those slopes and enters the stone trenches, if it plugs them up, then it's gonna defeat the purpose of the trench. The drainage calculations that were done have been done bearing in mind that those trenches absorb a certain amount of water based on the runoff. And they also collect the water at the bottom of the hill with the two catch basins and the subsurface infiltration area. So it's imperative that they be kept clean. So my concern is that um, the, you have a letter, I think goes back into October, probably in your file. And I had recommended certain things be incorporated into any special uh, decision making that you might do. Uh, I sort of reiterated that in the letter that I wrote late this afternoon. 
and I would request that you put that, those conditions in any permit that you issue. Uh, this is a subdivision, so it needs a certificate of approval to go to the town clerk, and there's a 20-day appeal period on it. But nevertheless, um, that's my request. This is a little bit unique. If, if it weren't for the fact that we're, we've got one and a half to one side slopes, and then we're doing a, a surface that is basically a gravel, unpaved surface, I wouldn't have much, as much concern over it because any runoff that came onto the paved surface would go in the gutter line, it would be caught in the basins, and it wouldn't interfere with your drainage design. In this case, you've got these trenches that, that run along the sides of the road. And if they get contaminated, they're not going to work. That's, that's my only point. Are they covered up with fabric, Charlie? They are they're covered and wrapped in fabric so that the stone is encased in a, yeah. encapsulated, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as long as the, as the sequence of construction is done so that the slopes are germinated and stabilized first, mm -hmm. then they can go ahead and do the trench construction, they can do the, the drive construction and get that done, and you won't have to be running stuff up and down the slopes. So um, that's my only concern, that, that you somehow incorporate that into your approval. Other than that, uh, Bill and I are in agreement with the details that are shown on the plan. Yeah, just to you know, reiterate that same point Charlie made, what we did too is we, you know, we enveloped our infiltration trench with fabric, but we also overlapped it on the top. So in the event that you did get some contamination of that top stone, you could still pull back that fabric, clean off that stone, and not have to worry about the bulk of that bulk of that trench. And this detail here also indicates where we wanted that silt fence to be uh, to be placed. But it's important to get that stabilized um, stabilized right away. And I think that if you were to condition it in that manner, that before the roadway really gets cut down to the grade and re ready to receive the gravel and the wrap, that uh, that 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 slope be stabilized, I think that that would, that would be good. We don't have any issue with that. Okay. I agree with that, yeah. Uh, one, one thing I would also mention, just for the record, I think I did put it in my, my letters. Uh, it's up to you as to whether or not you want to include it. This is a fairly steep slope with respect to most roads that you see. <coughs> it's unpaved. It has an exaggerated crown in it, which means that hopefully the water gets shed off to the sides and goes into those drainage trenches where it's absorbed and then runs down by an interior pipe to the drainage system below. During the winter time, when the homeowner asks somebody to come in and plow his driveway, they're gonna run a snow plow right up the middle of that crown and they're gonna shave the crown right off mm -hmm. and it's gonna end up flat. That means it's gonna be a potential for erosion and a potential for puddles. So it's essential that that crown be maintained so the homeowner should be under no illusion that he won't have to maintain that road, because he will. So it's going to be to his benefit, but without that, you're going to lose the integrity of the drainage system in its entirety, and you could end up with a mess on Oak Street. So it's imperative that he maintain that driveway the way it's designed and built. So from time to time, they're going to have to run a blade up there and push that material back in the center to create the crown. How do you enforce something like that? It becomes part of the approval, <coughs> and if something happens, at least you've got that backed up in your approval, and it's a part of the conditions of the approval of the project. So would, would you word it similar to uh, the road be maintained in such a manner that it enhances the ability for the erosion control put in place to operate properly? I would say it needs to be maintained in the, in the condition and the shape that has been designed Yep. and shown on the plans at all times. And that uh, um, periodic maintenance will be necessary and is, is the obligation of the property owner to make sure that it happens. And would it be the road commissioner that would make the determination that it, you know, it's time, you need to hire someone to do some work? No, this, this is a private road, so it's basically on the, the onus is on the owner to make sure that happens, but it's also, the homeowner's obligation to make sure that there is no detrimental impact on Oak Street. Right. Because I know so, there was a lady, I think there was a lady on the opposite side the of Oak Street that had concerns about exactly this. One of the changes that took place in the design was that 
there is a low point now in this driveway before you get to Oak Street. So it does this. So there's a little bit of a, a belly in the, in the uh, contour of the profile of the road. Yep. And the drainage calculations have been set up so that anything <coughs> it gets there during the 100 year storm, it might come up to the level of the basins, but because they're, low, they're lower than that little slope, it will maintain anything right there. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's important to maintain the cross section of the road and make sure that the drainage system operates the way that it's designed to operate. And the only way that happens is through maintenance. You think if we had a downpour though, it wouldn't cascade right across that little depression on the end? No, because it'll go into the catch basins first. They're a little bit lower than the center of the road. So I but think you're protected there so long as it's maintained. Right, as long as the crown is there. So he should be under no illusion that he's going to have to keep that in good shape. And if that wrap is put in properly and compacted and the crown is established and they exercise some care when they're plowing the snow, I think they can angle the blade such and not try to blast right down the middle of the driveway and scalp the top off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you kind of need to trim it both on both sides we're, first. We're both quite hopeful that that happens, but <laughs> oh, we, know we, that. Know. We, we know that somebody who's in a hurry to get to the next you one never isn't necessarily going to think of that. We know the, what's that? You never see me plow snow. Well, I, I, I do a little bit and uh, <coughs> at, at my own house and I try to be, I try to be careful with that, but that's usually the difference between a contracted guy and the homeowner doing it himself. So long as you write up your approval that that specifies in detail that he's responsible and that uh, there can be no adverse impacts on Oak Street. If anything does happen, at least there's a, you can point back to something and say, look, you agreed to this, it's a part of the approval that you've got, it's up to you to fix it. And as a suggestion, maybe you would want to, maybe you do want to put something that, that the crown be maintained. Um, in perpetuity. Yeah or however, however you feel appropriate, right? Mr. Swanson, any questions over there? None. Michael, are you satisfied? I am. Manuel, how are you feeling over there? Sure, no questions. <laughs> Anybody in the audience have any questions or any comments? At this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote is 4 0. Now you have to deal with the waivers. Make All findings. The waivers. Make findings on the waivers. <clears throat> yep. And there are nine waivers being requested. Over here. Are those the original ones, Ken? Yes. Uh, I think you can eliminate the last one. Did they agree to the monument? Yes, they did. All right. There are eight waivers. We've, we've been through these. Yeah, but you have to have an official vote. And, and I think I'll just make them, I make the motion that given that we have reviewed these and we've all nodded our heads in agreement with these waivers that um, I make the motion. The correct wording is that they are in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law. What you just said. <laughs> Did you get that, Sonia? <laughs> so I make the motion, you want me to read it? I make the motion that the planning board accept the waivers as outlined here and that we find these following waivers are in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law. How's that? Beautiful. Good. Perfect. Second. Just one comment with respect to that. Um, I think your regulations call for the waivers to be shown on the plan, but if, they, if you include the waivers in the certificate of approval that gets recorded, it's the same thing. So just to be sure that it gets a part of the document that goes to the registry. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. I want to ask you a question. Okay, okay motion's been made and it's been seconded to uh, accept the waivers. The eight waivers. 
as written in front of us. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm not sure if I get to vote here. I think I do, don't I? No. I don't, yeah, I don't think oh, so. You don't, you don't get to vote on this one, but you All right, so I you don't can, On special permits. You, you, can say I, you can say I anyway, Richard, it's okay. We don't want you to feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> Votes 3-0. Yeah. Yes, uh, you want to uh, do you each have a, a copy of the yep. certificate of approval of the definitive plan, the draft? This is your standard format for Form C1, certificate of approval of a definitive plan. Uh, what it does is it says, for the following conditions, see attached. And what we'll want to do is uh, put on standard conditions and the recommendations of the uh, town engineer. Town engineer in the November 18th letter. We want to put in here someplace also that that road be maintained and as the, designed. The maintenance agreement. Just, I'd recommend that get written out here as a part of the actual document that goes to the registry, because just to make reference to the letter, if the letter gets lost. Yeah. That's not going to get recorded. <coughs> but I suggested that the way the the wording of the C1, the certificate is that it's the following conditions are attached. So we will attach conditions that list out. Mm -hmm. That's that's okay. These these points that are raised. That's fine. Sounds good. Is there any um, recommendation on which way the owner wants to go in terms of a uh, covenant or agreement? A covenant or an agreement? Security, in other words. I would probably think the covenant would be the, the way to travel. I don't know. You can always change it. Yeah. In other words, he, the covenant simply means he's got to build the road before build the road you get a building permit. Before we release a lot for a building permit. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably what we would want to do, right? Or, or we could just post a bond for the completion amount after we start the work, right? Yeah. And you could adjust that amount based on how much work you finished. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you say, covenant? Covenant's fine. Yeah, okay. You all set with that, Ken? All set. <coughs> you said you want to vote on it? Uh, we did. We did. 3-0. Mm 3-0. -hmm. All right. Uh, we're going to need a majority of the board sign this, right? We don't have. You have three out of five. And Mike can sign as the clerk. I can. You're right. Ken, are you going to file that with the clerk's office this week? Yes. Okay. That's the reason why we're signing it now. Yeah, I'm just checking on the 20 days. Yeah, sure. Hi, George Mathis, David Mathis. The covenant would end after the road is built. Let's say the house isn't ready to be built yet. The covenant can stay in place as long as you're until you're ready to to build the house. Okay, and so the the bond for it. Yeah, if we want to release the lot and there's work to be there's work remaining to be done, you can put a bond up for the outstanding. They'll release a lot provided there's a bond put in place for the remainder of the work. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bill. The initial of the uh, form we use. 
as well. And this will beside your name on the vote for the, for the definitive plan on the first page. You see your name there. Nope. You didn't vote draft, Michael. Oh, oh Tyrion, I'm sorry. What am I doing? Initial. Next order of business, performance bond for Sheridan Home Builders, Inc., Spring Street. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I'm Matt Sheridan, president of Sheridan Home Builders. Uh, we've been working out on Spring Street. Uh, the road has been bindered. Uh, Mr. Raleigh asked if we could wait to top coat it. So we just wanted to establish a bond amount for the top coat so that way we can get building permits released. Shall you got any figures on that for us or? No. Um, uh, that's up to Mr. Sheridan to provide the numbers, and I'll take a look at it. Um, what's been done to date is the road's been built up to and including the binder. Uh, the things to be left are the top coat, the road shoulders to be loaned and seated. Um, structures need to be raised to grade, final grade cemented around. Um, there was something else that I included in my email to Ken, and I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. <clears throat> there was an estimate that um, Mr. Sheridan put in for 5,200 for the top, the top coat. That's, I, I don't think that that even comes close to the cost of all of the work to be done. I don't know what the <clears throat> the structures are being the, uh, the, the structures be, being installed. It, it that. <laughs> the structures are being installed this week. Uh, we started today. The weather wasn't cooperating. Uh, we're planning on sh looming the shoulders this week as well. And then obviously once the road's top coated, if we have to re-rake the loom or whatever to meet the berm, we will. But I'm planning on, I have to put the structures in right now so that way there's some place for the water to go. So all the structures are being put in. So and we're planning on installing the loom as well this week. And the 5200 was supposed to include the top coat? Well, there's, there's one or two ways of looking at that. You can, you can raise the structures up to the top of the binder so that the water will be collected now, mm -hmm. right. but they're gonna have to be raised the next inch and a half, whatever the thickness of the mix is. You can't leave them at that same elevation once you put the top on. Right. So that they, that's a temporary thing. Uh, th there's a way of doing that uh, such that you don't have to put the concrete collars around them right now. Just raise them up to the top of the binder and just cement around them temporarily and put binder back against the, the structures when they're up to the surface of the binder. Leave them there for whatever period you need. Then when it comes time to put the top on, you cut the area around the binder that deep, fill up around with cement concrete so it seals the structure and the casting together, and then you put the top wearing surface right over everything, right flush with the top of the casting, <coughs> you're done. So, how he wants to do it is either one or, or a two operation kind of thing. What's but your pleasure? Nevertheless. It doesn't sound like that's the, enough money. It, it isn't a lot of money, but it's still, if you don't include items in security, Mike, there's no way that if the town has to go in and do it later that. Well, I think that's what I was getting at is 5,200 doesn't sound like enough money. It doesn't to me. No. So without the numbers for each item, I can't give you an estimate. It's not up to me as a consultant to, to come up with the numbers anyway. Yeah. It's up to the applicant to come up with the numbers with his list of what he wants to post security for. Give it to you and to me. We come up with a number between the two of us if we decide that's the way you want to go. Um, and then he has to post the security in that amount. And then he can get whatever releases uh, mm -hmm. 
How many how many linear and feet are we talking about? Of road, mm -hmm. two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah, I mean that's twenty that, feet that, wide. That, that seems weak, to be honest. I mean, I'm I'm not a contractor. Don't get me wrong, but my neighbor is having his driveway done, which is seventy feet, and he's paying six grand. So to top coat two hundred feet for fifty two hundred just seems awful optimistic the the one thing we'll say is the quote came from the same person that did the base code already uh, top coat is a lot simpler than full installation to top coat they can come out they could top that whole 200 feet of road in probably two two hours How it's, you handle those structures? Uh, I've got two options with the structures I could I could actually right now just set them and leave them an inch an inch, and, um, an inch and a quarter high, and they could be left at top code height, or I can do it the way Mr. Uh, Riley suggested with just temporarily concreting them in, and then in the spring, lifting them up. I have no problem with top coating the road right now. I just felt like it was the town's advantage to have me wait until after construction was done. You're not gonna get grass to grow now. Mm -hmm. So you can put all the loam on there that you want, but you're not going to get grass until spring. I asked about whether or not the top was going to go on now. It doesn't have to. Um, the reason that it, it typically doesn't, and we're only, you're only talking about Spring Street now. You're not talking, remember there's a big loop around the inside of that property that's got to have mix put on it at some point. Uh, you've got landscaping and everything else that's on the site. This is a special permit. It wasn't a subdivision because the only thing that's there is you've got an existing street and it's a private way and all you're doing is putting in the construction according to the special permit. So that's what you have to go by. If, if you as a board want to decide that you only need security for Spring Avenue, that's fine. I guess that's up to you. I'm not sure how the special permit ultimately read. But um, I think you need, you need each item specified because if you don't, there's no guarantee that if something happens, and I'm not saying it's going to, but you never, that's the reason you put the security in place is in case something happens and the owner can't finish the job, the town has adequate funds to do it. Mm -hmm. And any project that a town does is subject to prevailing wages, which means that the costs automatically go up. And that's one reason why you add 25% onto the base cost of the, of the work to be sure that you've got additional funds to do that. So. I would suggest that you get the list, put a number aside of each item, and then vote on that, and now you get the security amount in place that is necessary based on one and a quarter times the amount. That's your normal thing. And then you can um, approve that, we'll get it in place with the town treasurer or whatever is gonna be done. Um, then I assume you could give a recommendation to the building inspector that you have security for Spring Avenue. Can you get us that information by the next meeting? Yeah, except for it's going to delay my building permits another two weeks, and we're ready to start putting foundations in. You know, but without, without that information, it, it doesn't sound like we're in a position to make No, I, I understand that. I think the easiest thing for me to do is I think I'll just top coat Spring Ave right now and just finish it. Are the, are the plants still open? Yep. Mm -hmm. When do they close? Uh, some of them will stay open year-round. Rochester Petuminous will open up right through the winter. There are limitations on paving. Um, if the temperature is below freezing, you don't pave. If it's raining cats and dogs, you don't pave. Typically, if it's 35 and rising, then you pave because you've got a good bond between the base course and the top. Um, so if he wants to do it, that's his prerogative. You can do it. I mean, there's nothing to say that he can't do that if he wants to. So there's less that he would have to put in place for the security. But and nevertheless, you decide what that security is. I'm only suggesting what normally is done. You make your own choice on what needs to be there. Well, I'm more than like happy to work with you guys. However, I honestly, I don't want to top the road right now. It's, I don't want to top the road right now. It'll make for a better job for the town if we wait until the very end. The one thing I'd like to really avoid is another two weeks without a building permit. So at least if we can get my first two building permits released, 
I'll gladly come back in two weeks. We can hold two permits. So that way there's still some sort of security there that you know I have to come back. However you want to handle it, I just... Give us I'll be top coding the road on Wednesday if it's going to come to it, just so that way I can get permits. And I really don't want to do that to you guys. Ken, do you have a copy of the permit with you? Yes, special I do. Permit. Are there any special conditions or anything in there? Oh, there are plenty of conditions. <laughs> <laughs> of course there are. <laughs> the tap room's not open yet, so. <laughs> no building permits shall be issued unless all site work is and off-site work is complete or sufficient security is approved by the planning board and in place for all remaining improvements. Security shall be renewable for up to two years. If construction continues beyond two years, the planning board at its sole discretion may require a higher value of security to secure funds for completion of the work as well as repair of the installed improvements. seem to indicate that everything has to be done before you get building permits or you post security for not only Spring Street but everything else so well that the wording of that really doesn't make sense though because you can't finish the site work without putting foundations in so the way that's written actually kind of shoots everybody in the foot you can't move forward without foundations you can't finish the site without foundations how do we get this guy going I mean, this is classic Wareham from everything. I, the reason I, I got involved in town government is that we're not friendly to people trying to develop. And well, this guy's I, I don't been, think well, let me let me finish. It and I'm not pointing at particular people or, or this board, but I'm talking only about reputation. This guy's been here how many times? This, for this? Yeah, for, for Spring, for Spring Street, third, third, third fourth time? Fourth time. Fourth time. It, it, it's too much. We need to we need to we need to take that into consideration and get, and get him going and do it in a equitable fashion for both us and for him. Well, to be to be fair to everybody involved, I'm assuming you're an experienced builder. Correct. So I would assume, to Charlie's point, that you would know what the requirements are to to have a performance bond put in place. Well, so why wouldn't you come to the board with that information in hand? Uh, a lot of towns handle things differently. Some towns hold certificate of occupancies until they're comfortable with where the project is at. Uh, Ken and I had a conversation about what we thought we were going to need, so that's why I provided the asphalt quote. Uh, and I appreciate what Mr. Swenson said, uh, but honestly, you guys have been pretty great through this whole thing. I've been able to come in, I've been able to talk to you, I've been able to figure everything out. That's why I'm, I'm here now saying I want to work with you. I just, I'm trying to avoid two more weeks of not having any kind of real construction going. That's why anything we can do right now, that's I'm not sitting here saying I need all my permits right now. If we just come to an amicable agreement, I'm more than happy to come back in. And by the time I come back in, there's going to be even more work done on the site. How can we handle this, Ken? You can reasonably. Um, you can uh, grant a modification of the uh, a minor modification of the uh, permit for two permits to allow them to obtain two. If that's your well, I, I, I don't think I would be of the mind to it. There's four total? There's four buildings, eight permits. So if, I got, four duplexes. so if I got permits for the first two duplexes, I could certainly come back in in two weeks. We could figure everything out, and then my other two permits can be released. I mean, in two weeks' time, what's going to happen? You're going to get permits, and you might get a couple holes dug. And I'll get the foundations in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's reasonable. You know, have you filed for the building permit? Yes, sir. And all the building inspectors waiting on is for Mr. Bachman to say, "Yes, green light. Yep. Here are your permits. Go." So re release two permits, with the understanding that he'll be back at the next meeting with the appropriate information to put together a bond value. That would be that would be reasonable. That keeps him moving. I think that, that, that would be very reasonable. That we need. 
we get the information that that Charlie thinks we should have to, to put a proper performance bond in place. Charlie, you think that's well? The reason I asked um, Ken to read, or if he had the special permit, and he read it and he read the terms of it. So you've got a special permit that everybody agreed to, and I'm not trying to make a stink out of this, but nevertheless, everybody has known since the permit was issued what the terms of the permit were. So if that's what the terms of the permit were, I don't know whether there's any language in there that allows the modification. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. You can, I guess you can do it, but the language of the permit says that nothing shall be issued until all of the site work is done. So that's not just Spring Avenue. So you, you, I'm just asking to consider whether there are other things that should be included within that in exchange for what he really shouldn't be getting by the terms of the permit that was agreed to and signed, delivered, and everybody was happy with and walked out the door with. I have no problem with you adjusting it, do whatever you want to do, but just take into consideration that you have a permit that needs some adjustment somehow. Um, well, well, that's a minor modification. But, right, and if we're holding up two permits for what he really should have come with to us tonight with. Well, the, the question is then, if, if you grant two permits, mm -hmm. what do you do when the site work isn't finished and he wants two more? Well, at that point, he's- Well, I already established, I'll come back in with, like I said, that's, we're just under the impression we just need a, a, a bond for top coat because all the structures and everything can be in. So I have no problem coming back and obviously carrying the additional labor to adjust the structures and then I can carry a little bit of money for hydro seed in the spring. It's, it's really, it's three or four simple line items. It's not right. a big well, deal. Well, and that's kind, of, that was, that's kind of to my point is it probably should have been with you tonight and we could have avoided this particular discussion. Yeah, all we did was provide the quote for the top coat and I have no problem with including everything else. It's not a big deal to me. So as long as, as, long as we get what we want for the performance bond as far as the accurate information? My question would be then, what are you asking the performance bond to include? Just Spring Street? Is it just Spring Street, Spring Street that he's working on? No, no, he's working on the site too. The special permit is for the entire project, not just Spring Avenue. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that though, like I had said, is how you actually interpret the way that's written because the way it's written isn't conducive because again, you can't finish the site without foundations. You can't tie in all utilities. You can't finish grading. You can't loom and seed. And the impression I've been under is, is the way it was written basically was for the, what is going to become the public way, the, ex the extension of Spring Street. Because the building commissioner will actually have a lot of jurisdiction with that too in the end because he's not going to release certificate of occupancies for units that aren't landscaped properly and aren't finished. Typically that's what happens at the end of a project. The landscaping may take a hit because there's, there's no, no, nobody looking over your, your shoulder at uh, installation of, of plant material. Uh, typically, in, in the, your zoning regulations, you have a, a performance bond for landscaping work. Um, that's one option you have to uh, finish the project off. I have a performance bond for that purpose. So we can include that in the information that he brings back to us? If you, if you desire. It's probably almost a slippery slope, to tell you the truth, because the town's not going to go on to a piece of private property. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying in general, the town wouldn't go on to a piece of property and necessarily finish developing it. It would, the bank would, the bank would take it over. It would become the bank's property. The bank would be the one finishing the project, not the town. So the question is, is the, the, the bond we're looking for would cover work only on Spring Avenue, is what I'm hearing. 
what the town would own if I step off a curb and get hit by a bus tomorrow. The bank, the bank would be responsible for finishing the project. <laughs> Is that true, wrong, right? Uh, seems obvious to me, but what do I know? <laughs> it would be negotiated at the uh, conclusion of the, of the ownership. Do we have any, uh, any... Uh... If you remember the site, the town way ends about midway through the site. Mm -hmm. Where the drainage is that's constructed is a private way. Sprig Avenue is a private way. So what we're talking about here is only a portion of it. There's the limit of where the town owns from here to Cranberry Highway, Richard, right there. Yeah. I was just up here the other day. Okay. It's been, right paved, it's been paved to here, all right? So what we're talking about is half of the paving to be done is private work and half of it is within the town layout. It doesn't make any difference as far as this is a special permit. That's all it is. So you've got to deal with the whole thing as a special permit. If, and I think that if, if you want to adjust the permit, modify it to allow them to get two building permits to get them started, then figure out a way how you're going to deal with the other permits that he's obviously going to be asking a release on and how you're going to deal with the rest of the project in terms of the landscaping or any of the rest of the project to finish it this this seems like a um there's four structures total so it's four eight, structures eight residences, eight, right? yeah, eight residences. yep it seems to me for a project of that size and again i'm not a builder but i'd be damned if i'd let 5200 bucks stop me from moving forward I'm all for, so, I, I mean, would be in Ken's office tomorrow with the cashier's check, if that's... Well, no, I think we're in agreement that $5,200 in our estimation is not sufficient. But if you're, if you're confident that $5,200 is going to top coat that road and keep you moving forward, why, right, the why only, wouldn't you just do it? Uh, I'm trying to do the right thing by the town. We're going to be in there building heavy construction. It's... I know if I just had my road top coated, I necessarily wouldn't want trucks running in and out, running in and out of it. So I was just trying to do the right thing by you guys. I have no problem with top coating the road. It'll be top coated on Wednesday. It's going to be 45 degrees out. What would you do, Charlie, if it was your project? If it were me? Mm -hmm. I think I would... I would recommend, in order to keep it moving, two building permits, but with the understanding that there was going to be a modification to the special permit, which would deal with the issue of him coming back and asking for additional foundations before anything else is done on the site, or sufficient security has been posted for the work that needs to be finished. Mm -hmm. That gets them at least in the door as far as getting foundations in the ground so we can stop building. Keeps moving, right. But it also helps you to um, uh, maintain the integrity of a special permit, which was granted by the town and the applicant, whether it was Mr. Sheridan or, or his predecessors, agreed to. I mean, when you go out of here with a permit, presumably everybody knows what's in the permit and you're happy with it. Mm -hmm. What happens when it gets transferred to somebody else is not you're really concerned. What you're trying to do now is to be accommodating as much as you can to keep him moving as a new owner. But still protect the town. Still protect the integrity of the permit. Yeah. So my suggestion would be deal with it if you want to under a minor modification, but make sure that um, you've provided enough protection in case it comes in again from two more building foundations and you haven't a thing to make sure that everything else gets done. I'm not saying that Mr. Sheridan is going to run out after he gets all his foundations in, but we know the people who have, and that should be enough of an education to realize that you need to put the security in place. Yeah. So, okay, so for it's just first, my recommendation. Yeah. So for us to move forward, what we're going to do is we're going to need a motion to modify this minor, modif minor, minor, minor modification. modification 
And you're going to come back in two weeks with um, some numbers? Not a problem. Well, numbers, so, and, and uh, the, the board, I think, should be discussing exactly what you want that modification to contain. Uh, right now, you're just hearing it for the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Sheridan is going to go out with, presumably, the authority to go ahead to the building inspector, and you're saying to them, okay, we'll give you two buildings. But between now and then, you might want to be thinking about it so that when you hold your next meeting, you're prepared to talk about the various things that are going to be needed to modify that special permit. Just a, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. no, Honestly, if you guys need time to think about it or whatever, I get the permits for two buildings, four units. That's going to keep me busy for weeks. So if you want to think about it, and I can come back in two weeks with a list and present it to you if you like it don't like it we can make adjustments to we'll it have, we'll have time to to deal with it yeah and then i can come back two weeks after that we can get the other two foundation permits the other whatever four well, unit we'll, permits well, i would recommend you wait and see what information is presented to you as a board and see if that's sufficient yeah. well that's why i just said i'd yeah, come in in two weeks and show them everything if they like it great vote everything's good if you think it doesn't work okay uh, it's actually three weeks. The second Monday in December is um, three weeks from now. That works for you. Sure. That works. What is that date, Ken? I'm sorry. December 9th. Oh, good. I'll be back. You going away again? So just we're on the same page. You're going to be okay to with 50th Ken birthday. telling the building commissioner you can release permits for two buildings for you. I want to vote <laughs> on the board first on that. Okay. Yeah. So you need a motion then to authorize you to release two building permits? Well, it's four permits for two buildings. To make a minor modification in the, spe in the site plan review special permit for the issuance of building permits for two buildings. Foundations. For two foundations, four units. In, all right. So we need to start with that? Yeah. Uh, so I make a motion that we authorize our director of planning, Mr. Buckland, to inform the building inspector that we're going to authorize building permits for two foundations on Spring Avenue project. How's that? Good. Okay. We have a second. Second. Boy, you're on a roll tonight. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> second. Okay, motion, and we got a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote is 4-0. That's a special permit, sorry. So now, so now the expectation is and that at our next meeting, we're going to see a list of um, the work that needs to get done with the cost associated with it so we can calculate the bond price, the bond amount. Is that, do I understand it right? He provides the number with the bond amount. Yes, we we yes. confirm it. And we can we approve it or deny it, right? Oh, and add whatever percentage <sighs> increase over the... My God. Not yeah, necessarily yeah. just Spring Avenue. Right. But the site work in its entirety. Yeah. And to be clear, um, this board looking down the road isn't going to grant or do anything like we just did for the first two foundations until this is all locked and loaded and, and in place right yeah there right? did, did be no more accommodations until exactly. this information is forthcoming exactly yeah so just so I come with every got everything you guys want are we talking about just spring Ave for the town for the town work or are we talking about the whole project the project well I just want to come back in with everything you guys need so whole project yeah yep okay is that all right? Not a problem. Everybody happy? Are you happy? Yes. Are you happy, Ken? Yes. Well, make sure you're happy. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, and you'll be talking with Ken if you've got any problems or any, or Charlie, anything you got to get that information back to us. Yep, not a problem. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Next on the agenda. 2019 Pine, Pine Grove Estates, LLC, Certificate of Lot Release, Lot 1-18, Parcel 19 and 20, JC Engineering. Is there anybody here for that particular? 
Doesn't look like it. No. What, we uh, are you work for JC Engineering this week? I, I wish I did because it's probably good money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was left on this was the uh, re the installation of uh, street trees and uh, the uh, uh, confirmation of a homeowners uh, association. Uh, with the maintenance agreement on both, and but in both cases, it's been uh, the trees Couple have been installed, and the uh, homeowners association is in place. It is or it isn't. It is. It is. We, we have the documentation. Okay. Will you have all the documentation? Yeah. Oh, I, no, that's fine. I, I that's just, fine. We believe you. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So you're looking for a motion to uh, release this this money or this bond? It's a covenant. Release. Covenant. I mean, I'm sorry. Dated December 9th, 2014. Hmm. Looking for a motion? A motion to release the covenant based on the fact that we have the confirmation of the street trees planted and the homeowners association in place. Are we a second? Second. Motion made and second to uh, release the covenant for Pine Grove Estates, LLC. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Votes 3 0. You can wait for George to sign for him as acting chairman. Do what? As acting chairman, you can sign for him. I got to sign here too? No. So you got two tabs here, that's why. Yeah, you have to put your name down there. Next order of business, discussion of possible vote on scheduling a hearing for Bay Point Drive extension. Cahoon Road, right of way, and road config reconfiguration. So, question: uh, I just the scheduling a hearing, a public hearing, is that what that means? Yes. Okay. And um, is that what that little sketch that we had in our packet? This little sketch you had was sent over to me by Stone Street. Um, what it shows is Cahoon road coming down to a proposed cul-de-sac with an emergency access way um, controlled by ballards that uh, extends to Bay Point Drive extension and removal of the existing section of road of Cahoon, Cahoon uh, that extends from the <coughs> The location of the cul-de-sac at the end of where they're proposing it against the uh, railroad tracks across to the existing Bay Point Drive where the um, special permit for the condos has been uh, approved and is uh, under construction. Ken? I respectfully request that you send this back to them and ask them to send a clear, well-defined, well-presented site plan. I agree. Thank I you, Emmanuel. Make, I can't make I, I have, you know, that. There's no uh, Sorry. labels on any roads or anything. Yeah. We're going to schedule a public hearing that could come with a better presentation. I'm assuming that they would. The question is whether or not you wanted to hold a public hearing. Do, do we have to? I mean, is it, it's part of the process. Oh, yes. or? oh geez, I think I think um, I, I don't know the rules and regs here, but I know the people. I understand this drawing real well. I mean, I I go up there a lot for golf. All right, but the people that live in these condos around this pond, they're going to want to have a chance to have a say. Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. I agree. 
um, because I mean, they're going to lose their, their back door way home. They're going to have to drive all the way down, back up through the sure. whole thing, and it's going to be an inconvenience for them. No, no, you're right. And, it, and it's, a, it's a, Sorry uh, a change from the originally approved project? It, it's a change in a public way. Cahoon is a public way. Yeah. And it's a change in that. Let's schedule a public hearing. Now, the people that live on Calhoun are going to love this, right? So Supposedly. You would think. They're the ones that complained about the trucks going through. That would all oh. stop in a heartbeat, wouldn't it? Right. So, I mean, there's, I think a debate is required. Yep. If it's going to affect anybody, then there should be a public hearing, regardless sure. of which side of the argument they're on. I mean, I, I would make a case for not having a public hearing if it was 100% good for everybody, but that's not the case here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's schedule a public hearing. Okay, and we'll, have, we'll have them pay for the uh, public hearing. Oh, thing. I'm sorry about yes. that. I gotta control myself. Ken, seeing as how this is a town way that they're ta talking about doing, where's the authority of the planning board? Isn't this a board of selectmen issue? It's, it's both, and it's town meeting as well. Town meeting right. eventually has to make a, right. de a determination. I can see the public hearing on the basis of modifying the special permit and modifying the layout of a private way. Mm -hmm. But I believe the selectmen are the only ones that can, can relocate or modify the layout of a public street. Really? They can't do it. But but it actually do it. requires town meeting action as well. But yeah. it, means, um, it means that the layout's going to have to be defined as to where it's going to end up. Uh, there's another issue that I see, it's not depicted, but if that utility pole that I see next to the proposed cul-de-sac is an indication you're dealing with that road being in the middle of a right of way. <coughs> I think the uh, electric company has something to say about that too. So I think there's some issues that perhaps need to be discussed before you get to a public hearing, resolve those kinds of things and know where you're going to go with it. Well, knowing what our role and responsibilities are, yeah, I hear you. Oh, it's any public way is under the domain of the of the board of selectmen. And they may go along with this perfectly <laughs> fine, and I'm not questioning. Yeah, 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 yeah. But questioning the proper procedure for doing it. Is the road commission involved well, at all with no, this? No, the, the road commission is not involved in it. No. Board of selectmen have the authority to modify and approve um, road layouts after a vote of the town meeting, and there has to be a definition of what's being modified or discontinued or relocated and the planning board has a role in making a uh, recommendation on that as well yeah and there needs to be a plan drawn which means that uh it would be i i would think since bay point is the one that's requesting this that they be the one to provide a plan mm -hmm. we got show one. the relocation and something a lot more than this yeah 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 this is woefully inadequate there are specifications that the board of selectmen have for uh, how a road layout plan looks, uh, the required procedures for doing that, uh, street acceptance and so forth. So um, my suggestion would be get a discussion going with Bay Point, uh, talk about some of the details that need to be worked out. But In town this, is no, this is no plan on the basis to hold a public hearing. So you think it would make sense to have them come in and just discuss with, with Ken directly? No, I think yeah. with the board. I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's a board. board. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they, they need to realize that it's a modification of the special permit as well. Yeah. Uh, the, the other issue that comes into this, and it would affect all of the residents of that condo project, um, is access. Um, the issues of emergency access come in here too. Whether you put a temporary pin in the gate to allow people to get in and out or you don't, uh, it looks like it's the uh, intent of Bay Point to try and control the access in and out of their property, which is fine. It's okay, but it impacts other people. So yeah. I think uh, Rich is right when he's talking about other people get to <laughs> weigh in on this eventually. So Ken, I think what we're looking for is uh, they're going to have to come and visit us. Yeah, I think what we do is we advertise a... Uh, that the planning board will hear modification in the special permit that affects the uh, public way. I think, isn't that a little premature? No, it's not because this is what, the, what it is. It's a modification of the special permit in the, 
that, that affects what the planning board issued in uh, subdivision approval and special permit and site plan review. But I think we're getting into the problem though because we're, we're dealing with um, the other part with the selectmen control the road, the public way. Or Cahoon yeah, Road. Yeah, Cahoon Road was a part of the special permit. So to that extent, you can, you can deal with it in terms of, of the public hearing. I mean, uh, a portion of their project includes a portion of Cahoon Road, which yep. is the town way. So, uh, and, this, the and the golf it, course, uh, yeah. the modifications of the golf course is within the special permit as well. Right. So, so to that extent, yes, you can do it. But I wouldn't do it on the basis of this. I mean, there needs to be a, a regular plan drawn that, exact, that shows you exactly what's going to happen, where the discontinuance is, where the new road layout would be, um, the definition of the new road that's going to end up being still the town way. All that information should be included in any document that's a part of the special permit modification. So you can refer to it in the decision. So do you want a, um, an informational meeting with uh, Stone Street? Yep. Yes. That's the, the best way to proceed. Yep. Yes. With the planning board or with you? The planning, the planning board. board. We, uh, we need to be very, be prepared to very clearly walk them through the our town's regulations and rules and processes for doing this then at that meeting are we ready for that yes we are okay okay so Ken you're gonna make a phone call I'll make a phone call send them or, to you. or an email I'm embarrassed. <laughs> okay so we're all squared on that for, for, Going to try to get him in here for the next meeting. Three weeks. Sure, let's mark him down. You guys, anybody going on vacation? Oh, I'll, man, be sure, back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Daniel's always on vacation. <laughs> Come on, he's living large. <laughs> you know what that phone call cost me, huh? <laughs> sure, it was pretty big. <laughs> Okay, next, staff report, rules and regulations, amendments, discussion. Uh, I got a, uh, some uh, rules and regulations for subdivision approval that, uh, from other jurisdictions that I want to put into the library, have available for you to review. I want to make recommendations on changing the uh, subdivision rules and regulations. Um, and I know uh, Manuel has... Uh, has been working on a draft of some wording that he'd like to uh, consider as well, including some uh, bylaw changes. But I think it's, uh, <clears throat> at this point, it's appropriate we uh, change the rules and regulations, amend them, and bring them up to date. Uh, things like um, the A&R approvals, the uh, road construction standards, the cross sections and the, uh, the details on, on uh, drainage and uh, construction. Specifically to A&R? No, specifically to road construction under subdivision control law. Because this affects the rest of what the uh, town standard is as well. Because the uh, State law says that whatever the, is required in the subdivision rules and regulations has to apply to the construction of town, town ways as well. Uh, I'm, but I'm sorry, bear with me. And the issue we're trying to fix is what? I don't know what the problem is. Um, Outdated regulations uh, that uh, don't conform to the latest uh, case law and uh, and uh, understanding of uh, standards of construction that we've that we've learned. So our subdivision laws are out of date. Yes. Okay. And who's going to write the new ones? The planning board will. The planning board will <laughs> with our consultant. Is that how that works? No, I'm serious. I mean, serious. I mean, yeah, we, yeah, we don't. We'll, we'll, we'll we hire someone pick, pick, to do it, or, we'll, uh, 
Okay. We, with Charlie yourself, I think we can do it. I, I don't think we're out of date with respect to what the town does and, and what we have for rules and regulations. I think what the statute says is you can't exceed what the town routinely does in its road construction. And I don't think that we do. Uh, I mean, they put in curbing, they put in 24 foot pavement. Uh, your rules and regulations give the, uh, the opportunity to adjust the width and so forth for whatever number of lots you're going to be accessing. Uh, but there may be other things that Ken is aware of that I'm not in terms of the upgrade of the state standards. But I don't think the subdivision standards have changed, have they, Ken? Uh, the, uh, one of the things that's, that's uh, changed has been the low impact development, the LID uh, drainage uh, management, stormwater drainage management that has, has uh, improved some of the, uh, the standards so you don't get large uh, detention basins that uh, take up a lot of land area. So what's, what's our next step here on doing this? I mean. Is it a workshop? Yeah, what, what do you, yeah. what, what I, do you I think that might be an appropriate way to do it, is to uh, set some time, walk through the regulations, and, uh, and talk about what uh, impact they have and, and what changes we may uh, recommend. Okay, that sounds good. I, I went through these uh, months ago um, prepared just a draft uh, and there are a lot of other things that are in the regulations that can be cleaned up um, one of the things that comes to mind that I just happened to be looking at as I was going through my stuff here is you've got something in your regulations that say that if a an approval not required plan an ANR plan is not recorded within six months that it's considered null and void I don't think that's I don't think that's according to state law it is according to a subdivision. It says if a subdivision is not recorded within six months, you have to come back to the planning board and get a certification by the planning board that the, that the plan has not been changed or modified or any adjustments made to it, and then it gets recorded. But I don't think you can do that to an A&R. Once, once you've signed it, you've basically said, we're done with it. So whether it's recorded or not, I don't believe is valid. I think you may be right. So that is a paragraph that's in under the A&R section of your rules and regs, and I think that ought to be struck. But there are other things in there that I had sort of redlined, um, which if you want, I'll send a copy to what I did to everybody, mm -hmm. so you can at least take a look in the meantime, yeah. and yeah, I'll send be you helpful. another one if you don't have it. But, I, set up a day for I went a through the whole thing and wrote a whole bunch of stuff for your consideration. So we're going to set up a date for a workshop. Uh, if we're not meeting in three weeks, can we slip one in? You want to do something in between now and three weeks out? I'm going away, I'm going away <clears> on the 26th. When's Thanksgiving? On Thursday? Thanksgiving is next week. Hope you're ready. Oh, if we have it there following Monday, we can have uh, hot turkey sandwiches, right? That's right. Everybody bring something <laughs> from home? <laughs> Monday, uh, the Monday the 3rd, I'm not here. Monday the 2nd. The 2nd, I'm not here. I'm back on the 3rd. You want to call in? <laughs> you have to take our our next meeting luggage. isn't till the ninth. Or That's right. Next meeting is December 9th Does it have to be a Monday? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Could be what, what day Wednesday. Is Wednesday the fourth. Give or? the manual uh, a chance Wednesday to decompress. The and Wednesday the fourth. You're saying? If, if it's okay with you, I mean, everybody, you, you available on that? The fourth. December fourth. I can do that. How about you, Charlie? Is that a Monday? No, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. No. Okay. I am in Mashpee that night. Thursday the 5th? I can do that. Yep. I'm open that night. I can do that. Okay, let's go. Sounds like we got a wiener. 7 o'clock? Yeah. Uh, can we meet earlier? I say. Sure. 6 o'clock? I can get here by 6. Six. Thursday the sixth. December sixth, right? Thursday, December fifth. The fifth. Twenty-seven. I'll check and see what room. Okay. Six o'clock. Yeah, make sure someone calls Patty. She gets really upset, as you know. <laughs> Would you like me to take care of that for you? <laughs> 
Ken, would you, can you uh, pass that word on to George that we yeah, made a we'll command do. decision? Yeah. He'll like that. He'll enjoy that. Okay. What else? That's about it. Anybody got anything ten else? May I, have, may I have ten minutes? You sure can. I need, I need two minutes after you. After you. No, I'll be, no, you, you go. Manuel's first. Um, I had sent out an email uh, earlier this week with the updated master plan after we've had our two meetings and we've gone through, we've gone through it top to bottom. Um, I got the source. I, had, I ended up starting over quite a bit, but I've got it really cleaned up. I've made all the changes um, that we talked about. I sent you a copy of it. Since then, I said I was going to bring hard copy tonight, and I did not. Um, uh, since I sent it out, I've been doing some work on just formatting it and cleaning it up and whatnot, so it'll be editable and easy to read and use and things like that. Um, I'm a little unclear on what our next step is right now, and I wanted to talk to you about what you wanted it to be. I think I'll just start with an idea or a proposal in that um, I do bring it hard copy um, with change bars on it um, that you can see where I've made changes and I can have it on a screen so if anyone has questions about remembering what it was before and what we and why we changed it and where it went to, I can bring that up because I can bring it on the screen and show you the old stuff with lines through it and the new stuff in a different color so you can see exactly how we changed it and I think if we can spend a half hour going through that real quick um, we'll be in a good spot to to approve and move forward I know Ken has some thoughts on some um, input that he might want to make I don't I want to make sure you have a opportunity to do that so I'm not clear how we do that maybe at that meeting or do you have some significant changes you want to talk to or that's fine I think one of the things I want to go over with is the land use map uh, in a little more detail to get uh, some clarification on direction that you that you want us to go in uh, terms of the overall growth of the of the town all right so why don't um, get past Thanksgiving I'll set up another workshop um, in December and we'll do that at, or Maybe we'll look at, does the agenda get pretty light in December? Do you know, is there any rhyme or reason to it? No particular direction. It depends on what comes up in the meantime. Okay. Um, um, I think most of the weight is on the, uh, on the Zoning Board of Appeals at this point, I think. I, I think the agenda for the planning board is a little bit later. All right, um, I'll get something scheduled. All right. Okay. And, and I'm ready to send. I'll send out another version. It's it's a little better. It's a little more cleaned up. And um, but I want to get moving. Uh, like to get it all done by the end of 2019. Um, and on the Congress proposal, I just want to give you an update. I've been to everybody except the Finance Committee. I go there Wednesday. And next step after that is to hold a public hearing a public meeting or a public workshop and invite all the rest of the um, Wareham agencies to that and get their input. So I'm moving forward, plugging along. It's slow, slow and steady. So good work, I guess. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Um, two things I want to ask for your participation, please. Um, I have an the reason I'm holding them is because I want to talk about them first. I have two suggestions for making changes. Uh, to, one is to the bylaws, and the other is to the rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land. Uh, they're, not, they're listed here, but I'm going to ask you to ignore number two, and please let's talk about number one. It's very simple. It, uh, sorry, the one from Charlie, too. You just pass it, pass it along like you're at school. Uh, number one deals with. Thank you. Very simple. It deals with uh, the definition of a two family dwelling. And uh, I recommend highly that the board approve the changes that I'm proposing. 
uh, that the definition of a two-family dwelling uh, read a building containing two dwelling units add sharing a common demising wall constructed on a single lot add also referred to as a duplex. And I, I welcome your comments and I think if you agree we should give it to Ken to do whatever we do with him to get him into the next town meeting. Would, would the phrase demising wall suffice for not only a duplex side by side, but one over the other? Or would you have to put? Well, that w that's not an issue. That doesn't become an issue. We're trying to. I, I know where you're headed with okay. this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I don't think so. Okay. This is, this is in number one in the zoning bylaw? Yeah, here you go. Yes, it's a, a, it's a recommended, uh, uh, a, 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 Amendment to Article 3. Oh, I didn't put the article down. I'm sorry. You did. Oh, yes, I did. 340-4. Section 340.4. Um, to, to expand the definition of a two-family dwelling. Because right now, the, the, right as it is today, it reads, a building containing two dwelling units constructed on a single lot. They could be 50 feet apart. 300 feet apart. 300 feet apart. Yeah. So, God forbid. So I ask for your approval of this and go forward. Let me look at what it is now. I just read it to you. Right. The, the, a building the, containing two dwelling units constructed bold, on a single lot. The, that is the current. The, the bold print is the, the change. The bold italic is the, what I want to add. Yeah. I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, we certainly learned a lesson. What does the word demising mean? Separating. A, a common, common separation. Thank you, Richard. Good, you approve. <laughs> the next. So we're going to make a, I'm 100% I'm, I'm behind you here, but don't we have to have a public hearing on this? No. Yes, we do. Do we? By the so like any meeting. other amendment to the zoning bylaw, you need to schedule a public hearing. Yeah, we're going to take this to town meeting as yeah. a, a well, I'm sorry, we need a public hearing also before going to, before sending it to a, Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay now can, may I make a, go ahead. I'm you. sorry, Neil, I, I wanted to just make one comment on that. I like the idea because I know where you're headed with it. You know, we obviously learned a lesson. But I'm thinking to a duplex over on Main Street, right around the corner from my new house, that has a very abbreviated breezeway that connects the two homes. It's 10 feet, maybe eight feet. So would this, circumvent something like that yeah i mean uh, then then the breezeway becomes 20 feet then it becomes 50 feet then 100 feet and then this is i think and i want to when i go to my next topic i think we have to put our foot down and uh if we're serious about you know controlling what happens to the town i think this is perfectly normal like my opinion. what about two garages meeting up with that that's fine. That you can have garage to garage, and then yeah. the, then you have the like, one single wall. Sure. Consider. Yeah, yeah. Just like so the, yeah. What about the the three and four family dwelling, or the five or more family dwelling? Um, it it would appear to me that that loop, the loophole you're fixing it on the appeal, two, it could appeal to all. Uh, if you thank you, I didn't look. I was focusing on the on the two. Yeah, clicks. I think we need to do the I'll same. Have, I'll, I'll look at that also, and I'll yeah. I'll submit something for that. Yeah, good point. Thank you. But I think, I think this is good. Okay, uh, and uh, what's our timing for having a, I mean, I'll, I'll get the other, uh, am I allowed to do this by email to each of you through the, through the, um, through the uh, chairman or, or through Ken, or do I have to do it at the meeting here? You can, you can do it through uh, my office if you want to. Okay, now I'll work on the others. Richard, good point, thanks. Okay. If, if you're in agreement, I'd like to go to the next thing I want to talk about, 
I, 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 the second rule, the second item, I would like to not discuss now. It's and, and for other reasons, but just ignore it. You can read it at home, but but I'd like to go to something else that happened tonight. Richard? I'm sorry? May I have your attention? Oh, yeah, I'm reading your thing. No, 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 but you can read that at home. Oh, okay. Um, uh, tonight, I'm, I would like to ask you to consider that, I, I, we can talk about this also, right? I mean, I'm not, am I overstepping any, they're not here now, the, uh, the applicant for uh, the, the uh, Used car lot is not here, but we can talk about it, right? Or not? Not about been... it, but about the process. You can talk about the process. Okay. Um, I have observed in the last two years that, that projects come before us and, support them, are, and are supported by presentations, well, this is what's happened next door to it, we're simply repeating what happened here. Uh, in, the, in today's issue, today's case rather, it was an ideal opportunity for us to do something for the town streetscape. Uh, the gentleman was unhappy with when I asked him to do something for the town, but um, I didn't mean to insult him. But for the planning board and our process going forward, I would ask you to consider that this project could have had architectural input. The, that area is probably in the, in the center of Main Street, and now we're going to have used cars being sold right on Main Street. The opportunity f was for the board to send them back to the drawing table. Yes, we want to support your business, absolutely. But there were many, or not many, but certainly I can think of at least one alternative approach to this to bring before the board. The existing buildings aren't really consistent with the vision that we ultimately would like to see for Main Street. The existing building that in, in front of which will be the cars could be renovated, could be moved back a bit in terms of its facade, and a new, a new front could have been designed that would start to give some Consistent, beginning to give some consistency to a streetscape beyond and then with, with uh, show windows where, you, where the cars could be inside uh, and between the facade, the, this expanded facade, I was, you know, I mean, you asked me, but I mean, here, here's that, this whole thing here could have been re, re-studied put the cars inside, put, put landscaping here, so we, and eliminate that 100, 160 foot, well, sorry, 100 foot curb cut. To me, this is not appropriate for Main Street. And I wish I had more support from you to say, we wanna help you, we're behind you, but we would appreciate it if you will go back to the drawing board and come back with something that is fitting for a main street. This is not an industrial park, industrial zone, uh, where we can, or metal buildings go up right and left. This is the heart of Wareham Village, and we allowed used cars to be parked right next to the sidewalk. And I think that that was a mistake. Respectfully so, I say to you. I think we should have sent them back to the drawing board and help them achieve the project. Sure, then I'm all for business. But where, where, what else 
if we don't do that right on Main Street, I don't see what value there is in, to, to participating in, in this idea of improvement. And uh, Richard, I, you've spent so much time on this master plan. I hope to God that the revised master plan doesn't accommodate this type of uh, design. So I'm sorry if I was uh, rude, I didn't mean to be, but I'm just disappointed in the fact that I can't persuade an applicant to go back to the drawing board. Thanks for listening. Can I make a comment? Of course. Um, I agree with where your heart is and, and, and the goal you want to get to. And, and I spent some, and I, and I figured out since our last meeting where you and I get off track. And it, and it, and it came from the, the document you passed out um, on the use of de design review. And what, and what this says here very clearly is that we need to have standards and we can't be making them up on the fly and we can't have applicants coming in and hearing one requirement one time and coming in another time and having us change our mind or having some thought that we want to come at him a little bit different with um, and at the very end of this it, it, it there's a paragraph here that i really liked and it said it cannot be overstated, a key aspect of design review if it is to be viewed positively is objectivity. Design review board should apply its standard as objectively as possible and not allow decisions to be based on personal taste of the individual board members. And without us having standards in place, which we don't have now, and um, I don't think we have any leg to stand on. It also says in here very clearly that we should have standards not for the town, but for the, for the areas of the town. Wareham Village should have, could have one set of standards, Onset Village another, the industrial zones another, you know, but we don't have any standards. And, we, and the key point, and I, I, I won't go back and find it in here, is that we cannot expect people to come in here and make proposals to us not knowing what's required. We have to be able to tell them. We have to say, you're going, if you're going into Wareham Village, these are our design standards. These are the conditions that we're looking for architecturally, landscape-wise, streetscape-wise. And we don't have that now. That's, that's where I struggle. So I think maybe we should work on those standards and we, we can get them done. Um, that is, I definitely agree with that. I've. Uh, uh, tried to get them going, as it were. Um, it's a long process. However, I, uh, Richard, I do not think that absent the standards, we do not have the right as a planning board to inquire higher standards of design. We, when, when I, and it's not, it's not subjective. It's not subjective. Look around you. Richard, I would not invest in Main Street today next to yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay? I mean, but, but by not insisting in a nice, in, in, a, in, a, in a positive way, sir, you're coming right into Main Street. Give us a better vi view. Uh, unless we do that, we're going to be repeating the same thing over and over again, absent the, the, the standards, which I wholeheartedly agree. I've talked to Ken about it. I've written some things up which aren't ready to show you. But I don't think absent the standards is, an, is, uh, is justification for not telling someone, sorry, I don't want a 100-foot curb cut. It, it's not consistent with good urban planning to have a 100-foot curb cut, to have used cars on Main Street. And now we have another parking lot. Now we got one at the, at the hospital, nice parking lot on Main Street. Now another one here. This isn't doing anything for the town. I, I, I'm sorry. And maybe I, I you know, I, I should <laughs> just forget it, you know. I, it's, we, tonight was a great opportunity because it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost him that much more to make that building more attractive, bring the cars inside, glass around them, 
landscape the front and make it pleasant. Now you've got bollards. And imagine you want to, you think they're going to pull out a bollard or with about three of them because they've got chains to drive out a car. Now what do you do? You leave the car there, you run, you put bollards in. It, it, it. Right. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Could I make right. one comment about that? I, I hear what Richard's saying, and it comes to my mind that in the draft of the master plan, Main Street is one of the three main focal points of the draft. The other one is Onset, and the other one's West Wareham. So my question is, what is the vision for Main Street? What are the features of Main Street that would be good to zero in on and say, these are the kinds of features which we would like to see expanded? Is, is there a design on Main Street, such as the, uh, the roofs, the projected roof lines from the facade of the building, from the fascia? Uh, are there uh, double hung windows? Are there uh, louvered shutters? Um, what are the types of siding, that type of thing? What are, the, what are the features that strike out as the best representations on Main Street? That would be the kind of thing I think you could focus on with a variety of options. As an example, and I'll, I'll bring this with me next time we meet, Town of Mashpee did a zoning proposal which didn't go through. They had a master plan a number of years ago for the expansion of Mashpee Commons. And they set a stack of standards within a document that was this thick for the various types of architectural features which they wanted to maintain throughout their entire development area. So that when they got done, it had the feeling of a New England style village. And if you go down there today with the majority of the local stuff that they put in, in the last say six or seven years, you'll see that actually in evidence. So what I'm thinking is Richard was talking about in terms of the vision statement and what everything that's in there, are there things such as options that might be included there which people could say, oh yeah, this is the type of architecture that would begin to change the face of Main Street in a positive way. And then begin to incorporate that type of thing into your zoning regulations so that when somebody like an applicant comes in, He's got those documents in front of him to see, you know, this is what they expect that I'm going to do. Make it fluid enough so that there are options that are simple and that for new construction, you've got to incorporate a lot more. Um, just something to think about, and it came to my head as Richard was talking and as, as Emmanuel's been talking. My serious frustration, I mean, you've got to have something to go by. Yeah, some sort of And not just do it haphazard. Yeah. But I'll, I'll bring in that document next time. It's fascinating to look at. Anything else? Good. Anything, Ken? No, I'll sit. I was going to say, I'll entertain a motion, yeah. Uh, I, I got a second. <laughs> second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yeah. I'll see if it's 10 o'clock. It's only 3 o'clock.